complete this early, you get a little bit of extra rest as we come through now. And our second athlete, Alexi Fiorici from CrossFit St. Simon in France. He will come in as well. And that's uh, Alexi down in lane number five. Again, they'll get a one minute reset as a group as you see a few more of the upper extremity make their way in on the far side of the field we move along now middle of the field that's rogan dean he is going to be the men's lower extremity he's unaffiliated out of new zealand so he will make his way down to the finish line this is a really really strong performance for rogan he's having a great games thus far uh known as more of the stronger barbell type athlete so to see him crush those muscle ups as he did was a really solid performance for him Another athlete is in. Looks like that's going to be in lower extremity as well. So a couple of athletes in. And now we'll check it here with Elliot Young. He's unaffiliated out of the United Kingdom. And they'll stop a little bit shorter of a run. And they'll get across the finish line as Panera is across as well. What's really interesting about this workout and I, why I love this one so much is that if an athlete is unable to finish the movement in the three minute time cap, they are immediately put underneath any athlete that does finish all three workouts. So even if you may not have the fastest time in one single modality, you, if you do complete all three, you have a significant advantage as we move through this workout. Luke Reason out of the lower extremity division finishing up his muscle ups and he'll make the way down the field after he hops over the log. And this is big for Luke. Being able to finish those muscle-ups is key. He is a big fan of those Concept 2s. And when we finish with a 20-cal row here at the end, don't be surprised for him, to see out, to, for him to be out in the lead. This is an event and a test that I think coaches like, programmers like, athletes sometimes because it's a little bit different. You're in your local box, and what does your coach say? Well, the quicker you finish, the more rest you get before we start again. That You've got to push the gas pedal in this three-minute segment. You really do. And while it is one whole comprehensive workout, again, you need to think about this as each three different big sprints. We talked about in our recipes for success. One of these may not be our best friend, so if we can manage that load, make sure we get through it, you're bound to have a really uh, comprehensive performance. And there is the cap on the first three-minute segment. They're going to get a one-minute reset. You'll see the timer in the upper left-hand part of your screen. So they have a one-minute reset. And now we are going along to segment number two. And now we're going to have the snatch variation. Absolutely. We're moving into that weightlifting modality now. And we're looking at our upper men using a kettlebell, a single-arm kettlebell. So prior in the toes to ring, they were allowed to use both arms. They are uh, limited to one and the same arm throughout the entire movement. And our lower and neuromuscular athletes will be doing hang power snatches, our men with a 95-pound bar in both divisions. To watching this test much different from performing the test, you see the clock move along 15 seconds. But if you're the one competing, you're the one in the gym, that clock seems to be in fast forward. <laughs> I always call it the CrossFit clock. The rest time <laughs> accelerates, the work time decelerates. Well, here we go. The snatch variations, the barbells, and then the kettlebells down at the far end for the upper extremity. Yep, and I'm really liking what I'm seeing out of lane number 14 there, Jeremy Pereira, looking really strong with that barbell. We saw him move that barbell quite well this morning in our elevated Elizabeth workout that happened in the Coliseum, so don't be surprised. He might take this one here in this middle, middle section. Have 20 reps here, then the shuttle spread. We already see several athletes off of the barbells. They'll make their way down. It's going to be a lot of the neuromuscular and the lower extremity athletes that across the line. And it's, this took about 35 <laughs> seconds for a lot of these athletes to make their way down. I didn't even have time to catch my breath to watch these guys, let alone do 15 hang power snatches. Really interesting to see in this one. We saw Elliot Young in the lower extremity division take first in this one. Again, watched him this morning, move through his first 21 power cleans uh, in the elevated Elizabeth really quickly. So I'm not surprised to see him out there. But again, Rogan Dean was quickly second behind him. Rogan did beat Elliot in in the first segment, so we may see that Rogan now has a cumulative better time and may have the lead in this workout. And Walsh will come across, and it's going to be Bart Walsh. He is the men's neuromuscular division. He is out of Australia, finished fourth in the uh, semifinals, lost the use of his peripheral nervous system, so the straight line up and under the obstacle after those snatches. Yeah, he has quite the backstory. He actually had a baseball sized sarcoma removed out of his hmm. jaw, and they actually used the tissue from his fibula to replace the mouth of his jaw, which is quite a fascinating uh, adversity for him to make look super easy. 
Next athlete is in in just about a minute 43, and that's going to be Xavier Osamendez in the men's uh, upper extremity, and he'll come in out of Saipan in Boto CrossFit. So, Shabby Mendez, Osa Mendez. Yeah, that was a really good test for him. Again, he does have that, sh while he does have one hand, he does have shorter digits on that hand. So, even just trying to clasp a 70 count pound kettlebell is quite a feat in itself, let alone snatching it overhead. Don't forget, everyone, Shop Trifecta, the official meal delivery partner of CrossFit at www.trifectanutrition.com backslash CrossFit. Get 40% off with the code of CrossFit. You see that QR code right there on your screen. The, the initial athletes, Tom, coming in right between 35 and 40 seconds. And a lot of those look like the uh, some of the lower extremity athletes uh, that got in at 35 to 40. You're looking at about, and it's good for them, about three and a half minutes for their reset. Because you get the reset coming up here. Yeah, absolutely. And I do like this event for the fact that they have to wait behind the line until the three-minute mark. Because it does change how they have that minute transition, right? Do you hustle down to the line and get ready to go? Do you take your time and stay composed? What's your best approach? And here we're seeing basically all the, the gentlemen jaunt down to the field to make sure they're ready to go. And on this rower and uh, right before that horn starts. Well, okay, Tom, here we go. This is the third segment here, and for the males, as we're looking at, you're looking at 20 cows on the row. Yep, this is one big sprint of an effort here. We've all got 20 calories across all divisions. This is nothing more than how hard can you pull on that handle, and especially within our lower divisions, it's going to be really driving through the core and pulling that handle close to the chest, obviously needing a little bit more upper body to drive than our lower half for our neuro and upper extremity friends. Following that, the 60-meter shuttle sprint. And then they're going to total everything up. So we would encourage you after, regardless if it's the adaptive, the teams, or the masters, go to games.crossfit.com. They're going to have some math to do today. There's a lot of math in this one. There's a lot of adding up. And it's hard to know who's going to be on top until we finish this last segment. Here's Reeson, uh, a top big pull by Luke Reeson. Yep, absolutely. Not surprised one bit by this. He is just going to put his head down and go to work. Like I was talking about yesterday, I've noticed, uh, I've seen him on leaderboards with a 3 to a 12 1K time on the rower. So look for him to be off this thing quickly. 20 seconds in, we'll see how long it's going to take for 20 cows as compared to what you would see maybe in your local box the hands go up under five cows a lot of these uh, rows are going to be done 32 seconds for one athlete <laughs> oh, come, come on that's recent that's reason all the way we got elliot young not far behind him and we have a fantastic race it's host way going to be out touching casey on that big finish sprint impressive stuff so four athletes in at 45 second but it's luke recent as you mentioned out of workington in the united kingdom that did his 20 cow what about 32 seconds 22 seconds i think i can't even get my feet right. strapped in in 30 seconds <laughs> let's be honest here comes horshar he'll make his way across he's in the men's neuromuscular he won it a year ago trying to win another championship yeah and while he did cross first in both the first two segments of that one he did find that's right. himself near the end of the pack so it'll be interesting to see with this cumulative time format where he does finish on this one and in this event regardless of what division you're in you got to play to your strengths you got to hedge your bets and maybe something you're not great at exactly and i think that's what we saw with horcher right there he went out blazing on that first segment knowing he has great pull-up skills went out got a really really fast time and hopefully used enough of a buffer lead to get him through to the finish on the top well you hear the horn that means everyone has completed the event and so the men's duo muscular uh, the men's adaptive is complete and they'll tally up the three scores and again you're going to go to games.crossfit.com and that's where you can get the official results but men's upper men's lower extremity and the men's neuromuscular she saw Tom. It's it's three max efforts and <laughs> grab as much air as you can in between. You got that right. We're looking at just full onslaught, full effort throughout these workouts. And again, they may not be movements we feel comfortable with, but we need to make sure we attack those weaknesses in order to make sure we can finish all three. So that's what it looked like for the men's adaptive division. We'll be right back. We'll take a look at the women's adaptive division here in this event. It is Mixed Mode Madness at the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games.
Outside at the North Park Arena at the Align Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin. It's day two in the adaptive and age group division in the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. I'm Jeff Brightwell. My broadcast partner is Tom Miazga. Derek Force of the competition for we'll check in with him a little bit later as we get ready for the women to take on mixed mode madness and we're going to see a lot of variations we absolutely are and you know it this is a best way i think you can test crossfit we're looking at isolating each of our modalities putting them under high intensity and then saying who can do the best across the board our ladies are going to be moving through a gymnastics movement into a shuttle sprint after a quick rest, they're going to have a weightlifting movement, all doing snatches or some variation of today, and then finishing it up with a high-intensity 15-cal row before sprinting to the other side of the field. So three-minute segments, one-minute reset. The quicker you're done, the more rest you get. Tom, what's the recipe for success? Well, there may be one of these movements that we're not a great fan of, so we have to attack that weakness. We have to know that all three scores matter equally here, so it's important that we press on the ones that we may not favor. Again, we need to look at this as three separate workouts, however, and know that each of these are equally as important. Let's take a look at how these athletes align up. We have 15 athletes. We have three divisions here, starting with the women's uh, upper extremity there in lanes one through five. Camille Vigneault came in to the day. Your overall leader will see where she hangs on by the end of this mixed mode madness. Moving along to lanes seven through nine. Four competitors to the left here in the lower extremity. And we'll take a look at Amy Bream right there in lane number eight. One to watch for the lower extremity. And in the women's neuromuscular, they'll be in lanes 11 through 15. Morgan Johnson came in to day number two as your leader. That's how they'll line up. There'll be 14 athletes here in the women's adapt division your guaranteed rate athlete to watch Tom right now I'm looking at Anne-Laure Coutonceau you can see her on your screen there she's getting her arm set up for those toes to ring she had a fantastic performance this morning taking the event win in elevated Elizabeth she moved fluid fluidly with that dumbbell in her squat cleans but also made quick work of her lunges so I expect her to see her do some quite some quite impressive work here in this movement 20 repetitions here, then the 60-meter sprint to the end of the field. Again, we're seeing a really great display of how we can adapt and modify workouts. We're seeing our upper extremity women using the rings for toes to ring. In the middle of the field, we have our lower extremity women tackling those ring muscle-ups. First time ever we've seen ring muscle-ups at the games for our adaptive athletes. And on the end, we have our neuro athletes pulling through pull-ups. No, I'll have to get the chin to the lower part of that ring and one athlete through and here they come down the field. Looks like Lauren Taylor out to a really early lead looking nice and strong but Morgan Johnson putting on the afterburners on that sprint. Morgan Johnson will be in second and so those are two of your neuromuscular athletes. Taylor and Johnson. It's Taylor first, Johnson second. We go down to the upper extremity. We'll have one athlete in thus far. Yeah, it looks like that was uh, Camila Vignon and Christina Mazzullo actually already finishing for the upper limit. Mazzullo out of Spring Lake, North Carolina from Tar Hill CrossFit. Back in a no rep, just didn't get the chin over the ring that time for Lech New Place. Awesome to see right there, these women in the lower extremity are tackling these muscle-ups. Valerie Cohen, again, the former gymnast, making easy work of those ring muscle-ups, looking really strong. However, 10 is quite the big number to see if they can hang on and finish this under the time cap. One more. No rep. Just got to get that chin over and back on the other end is Anne Lori Continent. So, out of CrossFit Honey Baby. You said that was one that would do well in this one, and she's through. She's got two more segments to go. There's one's lower extremity through as well. Excuse me, that's Layla Ives out of the neuromuscular. Wrapping it up there is Lechen Duplacis, also a neuro athlete we want to watch. I had a chance to actually talk to one of her coaches this morning, and we are already on the fifth event for these adaptive athletes, and especially for our neuromuscular athletes, we're starting to see their CNS take a toll from all the high intensity they've been put through thus far. We're going to see how well these ladies can finish out as we keep moving through our different modalities. Here's Valerie Cohen. She's at the women's lower extremity. She's through a good point there and explain when when we come through with the neuromuscular uh, division and the aptitude division, what all does that entail for those that are tuning in and may not be familiar? So when we think about a neuromuscular athlete, we're thinking about a disability that not only affects them physically, but their mental approach and how they have to actually uh, 
think about moving their body takes a big toll and can be a lot more of a process than most any able-bodied athlete or individual would have to think about. I myself with cerebral palsy and specifically spastic diplegia, there are days when I've overexerted myself to a point where if I tell myself to try and walk, my legs are just gonna, not going to cooperate. And watching the ladies this morning on the Elevated Elizabeth and watching them here now, you can tell and even, again, talking to their coaches, yesterday's workload took a toll on some of their CNSs. So trying to maintain a composure, feel like they can move through these movements nice and steady and feel like they can get them all done is going to be really, really important for them, especially as we move into one more day of competition tomorrow. First segment is done. The athletes walking back to the other end. They have about 30 seconds remaining out of the one-minute reset. Now we're going to go to the snatch variation. So we're looking at our upper individuals using a kettlebell for this one. The ladies are going to be using a 53-pound kettlebell. They're going to be doing 15 kettlebell snatches, where our lower and neuro women will be using the barbell. It's a 65-pound hang power snatch. And they're underway. It's going to be 20 snatches of some variation, regardless if it's kettlebell or with the barbell. As the near part of your screen to the front, that's the near muscular down to the upper extremity. It's going to be the kettlebell snatch. We got a great shot here of Eileen Quinn coming through with a nice second place finish in elevated Elizabeth this morning. Again, moved really well with her dumbbell squat clean, so it's not a surprise to see her moving this kettlebell as well as she is, but she's looking to set herself up for a really, really nice finish. Right there in the middle of your screen, Amy Bream, athlete 202. Nice, and just above on the top of the screen, we have Molly Moore finishing first for the lower women. She is a para, para, uh, member of the U.S. para rowing team. So as we head into that final segment of rowing, this could be a really good finish for her. Good run there by Morgan Johnson. You see several of the neuromuscular athletes here come the lower extremity, upper extremity still wrapping up their kettlebell snatches and will make it across there. Love to see this determination by Amy. I know she's had some struggles in the past, of, especially with how hot and humid it is down on that floor. I think keeping her prosthetic on while she's moving is quite, again, another obstacle that maybe not most athletes would ever have to think about handling. Also went through that very long run in a bit number one yesterday morning. Yep. And again, that's going to take a big toll on her gait. I'm just trying to balance all of that and make sure that her functional leg and operational leg are still giving her all the benefits she, she needs. I believe that's Eileen Quinn down in lane number one for the upper extremity at Octane CrossFit in Phoenix, Arizona over the log through the pylons. Moving really well. Again, finishing this second segment. Also looking to post a really competitive time. Be interested to see how she does on the row. Looks like she was checking that hand. May have a little bit of a little bit of a rip or a tear. We'll see as we see a couple more athletes down on lanes one through five make their way across. No surprise there. I mean, those athletes this morning had to use the same arm yeah. for both dumbbell squat cleans and kettlebell overhead walking lunges. So that was quite a toll on their grip already, let alone holding onto a 53 kettlebell now again in that humidity. Christina Mazzullo on the far side, closest to the screen is Elizabeth Pride, an affiliate out of the United States. Mother of two. She was fourth a year ago. Mazzullo on that far back end of your screen. Editorial CrossFit. Elizabeth Brad looking really strong here. Actually, a fun fact, she's coached by the one and only Casey Acri on a daily basis. So Casey's pulling double duty this week, not only being a competitor, but a coach as well. She wanted to say a special thanks to her athlete questionnaire to Brad Patty, who really helps with a lot of the equipment that she needs. And so here is Elizabeth Pride trying to finish up here on the kettlebell snatches. Again, we often think about using kettlebell snatches at a much lighter weight, trying to balance that weight overhead. We know sometimes how that bell can come around and clash on our forearms and our wrists is never the most comfortable thing. So seeing these ladies attack as they are is very impressive. All right, one minute reset. We're going to go into the final segment here, and this is going to be the row and the sprint. And what's also interesting to notice is even as these ladies are moving down the field, it's something that we may not think about, but how important that shuttle run at the end can be. Depending on the class and depending on the disability, there are going to be athletes that have a significant advantage on that, let alone being able to move through the movement they're working on next. 30 seconds remaining before this final segment. Again, they will tally up the three times, and that will be their score. And again, you're going to go to games.crossfit.com. They have posted the men's adaptive division scores already, so you can check the standings with games.crossfit.com. That'll have your uh, event finishes and your overall as well.
our ladies here are about to get ready to tackle 15 calories. All ladies across all divisions yeah. do not blink. This is going to happen quicker than you think. 15 cal row underway. A great shot there of Eileen Quinn and Anne-Laure Coutonceau. Once again, we're back to allowing both arms on that rower handle. You can see how Eileen actually ties her, uh, comes with a supinated grip pulling underneath that rower handle where uh, Anne-Laure is going over the top. We just see who gets off that rower first. I like the supinated grip sometime to try to get a little bicep, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, when our arms are already feeling it way too much, right? <laughs> Cardio for the biceps. <laughs> well, we saw a 32 second 20 cal row for the men's division. We'll see what the yep. 15 cal row takes. Not much Just time. like we saw Molly Moore, member of the U.S. para rowing team, off of that rower first, making great work over the top of that rower, of that uh, log, excuse me. Let's see if she can hang on and finish that sprint to get some top times here. Now, those are two different divisions running, so those are two winners in each division if she can get across and just pulled up shy of the finish line. Lauren Taylor just squeezing ahead of Morgan Johnson in that workout, too, which is big. Morgan is currently your leader in the neuro division, but Lauren had a really, really impressive work there. She may have taken this event title. I know she did, though Lechen did win the rowing section. Lauren did come in in front of Lechen in both prior segments of this workout. Well, you can tell when the athletes emptied the gas tank, the collapse. As I believe that is Breen trying to get over that log. She's there. Absolutely does. I mean, that thing is 50 inches tall. That's no no ordinary feat. And we saw plenty of our individual athletes tackling that this morning. And uh, it didn't look easy for them either. There she is, Amy Breen, finishing off with a stellar performance. So here, the horn that means all the athletes are in under the three-minute segmented cap and now they'll total everything up and again you can go to games.crossfit.com and check the event standings and the uh, official leaders so far they'll have one more day of competition that that will love that event i mean you there's no room for for pacing in this one nope it's three different workouts that all come together but you got to make sure you're giving your absolute best on every single one and so that'll wrap up the adaptive division for day number two as the adaptive women are now finished with the mix mode madness. And so they'll get one more night of recovery and then it's on to day number three to see who's going to be the champion in the second year of the Noble CrossFit Games adaptive division. We're going to get to the age groups here in just a moment. They'll make the switch over. Final thought, Tom. It's just been impressive to watch these athletes go. It's it's an honor for me to be here to be able to have the ath, uh, adaptive perspective as these athletes work, but just seeing the the progress and the development in their abilities and through the whole CrossFit movement to incorporate adaptive divisions has been uh, quite the blessing for all of us. Outstanding. Looking forward to day number three. Bill Grunner will make his way in. Age groups are coming up next here from Madison, Wisconsin on the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games.
back inside North Park Arena on the Alliant Energy Center campus here in Madison, Wisconsin at the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games as we get set for the final event of day number two. I'm Jeff Brywood alongside Bill Grunner. Later on, we'll check in with Derek Forrest on the competition floor. We just saw the adaptive athletes go after this bill. Now it's time for the Masters to try out some mixed mode madness. And just as the adaptive did, we have three separate events here. We have 20 muscle ups, followed by that obstacle sprint with a one minute rest and 20 snatches with varying weights depending on the division, uh, that sprint, and then the 30 calorie row or 20 calorie row depending what division they're in. This is going to be fun. It is an all-out sprint, and I love the interval setup. What's the recipe for success other than as a coach, you would tell people, don't pace? Well, yeah, this is not a time to pace. The first thing's first, you have to finish each one of these events. And the reason is, you could be first in two of the three, not finish one of the third, and you will now fall below everyone else that did complete all of it. So you got to finish it. And then you got to relax the rest, or relax the race, to race. You need to know where your weakness is, and you have to make sure you're ready to go for that. So don't open up the floodgates on one that's going to ruin your other one. You got to go hard on all of them, but you really have to mind that weakness. Here is a look at how the line up. Now the entire division will go together, the males and the females. We start out with the women in the 65 plus coming into today. Pia Gunn was your overall leader in lane number five. As we look now at the men's 65 plus, it was Cal Sherrington who did well earlier today. He is in lane number 15. So we'll see who can make some moves here with one of left today and that brings us to our guaranteed rate athletes to watch so Oswaldo Tumpanamba is tied for fourth place with Ken Ogden so this is a real important event for him now when we look at what he's doing he's 240 points he's uh, 10 points out of that third place spot so not only is he tied but he's got that 10 points if he wants to get into that into that podium position and we are underway. Anyone you eyeing there for the women's division in the 65 plus? Well, I just have to look at Pia Gund. I mean, when you're talking about anyone that's been doing anything consistently, it's been Pia. Third place, first place, first place, first place in the event. So very, very, very solid. Now, one of the things we're looking at, uh, she's shaking her head. So this is going to be somewhat, you know, depending what the other ladies have, and we have to kind of look to see what these other women have. And we don't know if it's an injury thing or what, but it can be possibly because all of these athletes had to do ring muscle ups in the quarterfinal. So we know that at least they've had, they've been presented with that. We don't know if they did any of that, but again, this is a very, very, very technical uh, gymnastic movement. I mean, I remember being in the games when I competed, we had ring muscle ups and they didn't even let the athletes at this age do this. So the fact that they're up here, I think that's great for them. Uh, something definitely to shoot for. And for those athletes that do have it, my goodness. So we got three minutes, and again, these scores are tabulated by time or the reps they complete within the three minutes before the one-minute reset. You're going to have three different segmented scores totaled up. So again, as we said in the earlier, uh, the adaptive division, go to games.crossfit.com. There's going to be some math that will have to be done in this before they tabulate the final scores here. Well, I mean, if you are one of these older Masters athletes and you have some ring muscle-ups and you're able to get through that number, that is a massive jump. Because virtually, if you can get through your 15 that you have to do here, you can almost coast the rest of the other events because all you have to do is finish them. Uh, so again, if you have that skill, it definitely bodes well for you. But if you don't, then you're just hoping that nobody has that skill. <laughs> As you, you know, when you go outdoors, you deal with the elements, a little bit of wind today. We've seen this in games past, have to steady those rings. And that's really becomes important, Bill, not so much the wind. All you see the flags blowing in the background is, but when you come down, can you control the rings a little bit? And that even happens when you're inside the gym. Uh, uh, you know, all of them, all of them want to make sure that they can, you know, contain those rings. And they, they're, they're long strap rings. And I don't know how many people have felt the difference between a short strap ring muscle up and a long strap ring muscle up. They are vastly different. So not only do you have to contain or contend with a different kip as you're trying to get yourself up and over those rings, but you now have those rings swaying all over the place. And they can get really messy. Well, tried to turn it over, but couldn't. Had a nice swing there. But it's a lot of technique trying to get the turnover. Well, threw his head through the rings that time, just couldn't couldn't get it up. These athletes have about 25 seconds remaining to try to get uh, as many reps as they can. Don't forget Shop Trifecta, the official meal delivery partner of the CrossFit Games at www.trifectanutrition.com backslash CrossFit. Get 40% off with the code CrossFit. You see that QR code on your screen. We're nearing the cap for the first three-minute segment here in the 65-plus division. And 
I think he got locked out there. I'll get a one-minute reset. I'll give that man a standing ovation because that was a beautiful ring muscle up. And I think maybe it's because he was in front of that big fan with all that mist that's going out. It is hot out yeah. there, you guys. It's no joke. So the fact that these athletes are out there trying to go through a sprint element um, and just baking in the sun, like that's a big deal. Well, now we're going to switch it up. We're going to get on some barbells here. It's going to be snatches and then that 60-meter obstacle course. Then again, it's uh, again, it's an all-out, all-out effort here, and you'll see some more cycling through. I'd expect in this segment, you're going to see several athletes get through this segment. You know, now we talked about in the last event being very mindful about the weight that you have and how you're going to break it up because you you know you want to be able to get through them fast but you don't want to get shut down this is more about you need to hold on to that bar and do as many of these reps as you can unbroken right there's oswaldo in lane 13 He's got to grip and rip that bar. Now, he's got to be smart about it. Now, that's okay to go singles if you want to go singles, but you want to contain that. You don't want that bar bouncing around all over the place. Be smart about how you're moving. For Osvaldo, that's a good technique. He's getting a jump, but let's face it, Bill, we would all like to be John Mariotti just muscling up off to the right side of your screen. I was just going to say that. Mariotti, the thing that he has is <laughs> the bar's not moving fast, but the bar is constantly moving. It gets up over top, and he sets that. He even uses a little bounce right off the ground. I'm not saying that he is bouncing, but there's a rebound method as it touches the ground. He stops. This is his reset right at the hips. So he stops at the hips, and then he can continue that whole movement all the way through. So that's Osvaldo to Panamba in the middle of your screen where they can go all the way down to lane number one. That's Betty Schaefer Nobin. That's Ioki Dekoff in the middle of your screen, the oldest competitor at age 72. And Betty Schaefer Nobin on the left, she is 66. This is incredible. And our first athletes making their way to the obstacle course. That's a pretty big hop here at the make her way over the long I believe that may be patty walkover or is it carrie it's walkover over the bar and she'll make her way in and this is great because patty's in that third place position with 260 points so she's 40 points behind uh marcia yeager it's a big deal for her to be out there this is these are big points you can pay, hopefully pick up over pa over uh, marcia as they navigate the Log in. We'll have our first athlete all the way in. That's going to be in the men's division near the bottom of your screen. And again, it's going to be three different scores. So two females, one male in here in the 65 plus. But it is going to be Patty Walker with your first female in in the 65 plus. As a couple of the males have completed, and here come a few more of the females. Again, they are going to go on the clock to your top up to the seven minute mark, and that will be your reset. You know, one of the things that all these athletes need to remember, we just saw uh, Cruz, Consuelo Cruz flying through the finish line. You need to do this. We saw this even in the in the adaptive division. Some of the athletes getting off and getting going on that on that last sprint and then holding up right towards the finish line and coasting to the finish line. You are in a race to the end, so you want to make sure you get all the way through there quick. Well, with three times, say you're coming through on here and you think, well, I've won it, I'll pull up. But the seconds you save in this segment, might help you out exactly. on segment one or three. Exactly. Yoki okay, Dukoff, again, 72 years old out of CrossFit New Style in the Netherlands. She's competed a couple of times. And Dukoff is across an eighth, ninth, and a third in day number one. She's so cool. Come on. I love her athlete picture where she just flexed on the day they <laughs> checked in. <laughs> All right, so you get one minute. You get to the eight-minute mark. As Tom had pointed out during the adaptive division, they don't let you just walk back. You have to stay down there until the one-minute reset finishes, and then you make your way back. So you got 60 seconds. Bill, here's where the I like to call it the CrossFit clock takes place. <laughs> I say it goes in slow motion when you're doing the work, and it fast forwards during the rest. The fastest minute on the planet is during the rest time. It's like, oh, we got 60 seconds. I mean, we have eight seconds left. <laughs> Come on. All right, Bill, we're going to go here to the row and then the final sprint. This is pretty straightforward. It's how much do you want to hurt on the rower? Yeah, I mean, this is the last part of this event and the last one for these athletes for the day. So they really need to lock in and get as much pull on this uh, on this cable as they can. Right there is Michael Bridges. 
stout athlete. Now, he's he's a strong guy. He needs to have some heavy pulls on this. He's not as tall as some of the other athletes, uh, but he needs to get as much wattage on that cable as he can. Well, he'll rely on his weightlifting, powerlifting background exactly. on those legs. I mean, look at those quads. I mean, what I've seen are the athletes that are very strong on deadlifts uh, usually have a tendency to have a really strong posterior chain, that back end side, so they can get a lot of pull out of there. Uh, trying to, to help out with maybe they lack in length, they can make up in power. Speaking of power, we've seen this woman plenty this week. Patty Bauer, unaffiliated, out of the U.S. She won it last year. Back over to Bridges. Bridges out of IMA CrossFit in Lebanon, Tennessee. Three times in the game's best finish in 2017 and an 11th place finish. Be one of the 10 fittest in the world, so he's already surpassed that. How much can he add to it? I mean, you're pulling over nearly 1,300 calories. You're 65 plus years old. Yeah, this way, this this amount would crush a lot of people in your regular gym, just your regular gym goers, regardless of their age. And again, we're trying to see for these athletes, what kind of efficiency do you have? Not just are you gonna get sloppy, but getting over that thing and pulling that as hard as you can. Maybe Terry Carey and Patty Walkover down at the far end, but near the middle, that could either be Holt, Bauer, or Cruz. We'll check on that in a second. But several of the females are off early, and they will race the obstacle course on the 60-meter to get down to the finish line. Here come the males, the bottom part of your screen. we got a good race going on near the bottom. We'll see who that is. That could be in Sherdell. And if that is Sherdell, that's a great position because he was also tied with Oswaldo for that third, that fourth place position, so he really needed that. And then depending where um, Ken Ogden comes in, that could be that could help jump into onto that third spot podium position. But like Kerry and Walkover may have gotten into the top half of the screen again. You can check games.crossfit.com. You can get all the official results. What we're telling you right now, unofficial. We have the field view here, and here comes Bridges, and hopefully. Hopefully that's just fatigue and didn't do anything as he walks himself across. <laughs> well, I would have to say, I'm not sure if I'll try this one out, but the, the row portion, because there's, you can sit down in rows. How, how hard do you want to go? And there is Mr. Bridges, outstanding effort. You're just getting a little recovery walk. <laughs> But as you mentioned, you're a regular athlete at the gym. It doesn't matter if you're young or you're a master's athlete. If you're hammering almost 1,300 calories. Well, when was the last time that you rode really, really hard and then had to get off that rower? Most of the time, your butt cheeks are cramping up, your legs are cramping up. So to have to do that and then well, to a sprint, to a shuttle sprint, I mean, that's really testing these athletes. Um, regardless of your age, regardless of your ability, go all out on a rower and then do a sprint in a three minute interval and just see how, what that feels like. Well, let's say I get off the rower and that's where it ends. <laughs> Usually you kind of fall, you teeter <laughs> off the rower and just kind of fall down. That is a 65 plus division. We are gonna move along here as we continue here at the Noble CrossFit Games.
2022 Noble CrossFit Games for the Align Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin, as we continue final event of day number two in the age groups and the adaptive divisions. We're going to move along to 60 to 64 division. I'm Jeff Brightwood alongside Bill Grunner. We'll check in later with Derek Forrest on the competition floor. Final event of day number two. Chance to make a statement here in mixed mode madness. It's a three-piece event. We have that 20 muscle up. We're actually going to start off with either 10 or 15 depending on their age groups. Then you have that sprint, a one-minute rest, 20 snatches. The sprint, another rest, 30 cal row or 20 cal row depending. And then that sprint. And this is tough because that interval style event is really, really nasty. And this is really testing these, uh, these athletes, this age group. Part of the recipe, Bill, is to go hard, but you know, you're trying to finish here. Well, not only finish, but you want to try to finish each of the pieces. So depending on the rep schemes or calories or whatever that you have, you want to get that because those that finish will always place ahead of those that are winning individual events. So that's the first part. Second is relaxed race. You got to know where your weakness is and try to balance against that as best you can. One age group, two divisions. Let's start with the women. They're in lane one through 10. Mary Beth Proadritis is your overall leader coming into today. She was solid. And there's Shannon Aiken in lane 15 he was your day one leader coming into day number two trying to hold off Christian Yaley there and Tom Famery and so that has been a nice race we saw earlier today inside the Coliseum so that's how they line up who is your guaranteed rate athlete to watch here well I got to keep my eye on Tony Tursky who's going to be down in lane 13 uh, kind of up towards the middle of your screen there starting off with these events there's Tony right there now the thing with Tony is he's sitting in that fourth place position he's about 20 points out so he needs to do well here but when I look back at some of the scores that these athletes had whether it was either current events here at the games or at the, some of the qualifiers Tursky was really really well he does really well in the gymnastic events um, so I, I hope for him he can do a decent or have a decent finish here so Tursky will take just a quick break there move along to hold And Hunt will take a break. Charlie Hunt out of CrossFit Freedom in Libertyville, Illinois. A 10th of the 5th yesterday. Was 8th in the semifinals coming into the Noble CrossFit Games. And I don't know if you just saw right in the middle of your screen, Will Powell just completely muscled his way through that muscle up. Kind of a slow overturn, but he was not going to make that be a no rep, so he worked his way all the way through it. Judge is checking out the kip because our standards say the CrossFit Games not to get the feet above the ring. So they brought that head judge over there just to make sure they right. weren't getting the feet over. Right there on the right, Yvonne Howard. We saw her earlier win the parallel Elizabeth, uh, the only person to beat Mary Beth. And look at that. Nice false grip into the muscle up, trying to work that up and over. Still waiting to get that lockout. Oh my gosh, that's the longest rep in history. No, I had to force just a little bit of that elbow out to make sure you got the full lockout on it. All these athletes really trying to work themselves up there. Got one male through. We'll have to navigate the O course to get the 60 meters in. That's going to be Aiken. Man, Shannon Aiken is absolutely a beast with these gymnastic movements. He's not a small athlete, real tall, uh, but just has that gymnastic prowess. Here's where you're talking about. He is pushing it, want to get against that finish line. That's the thing that just could be deceptive in your head. I've got such a huge lead. I'm looking around, but the seconds gained or lost in each segment will really affect you as it goes along. And there is Hunt. Saw Charlie Hunt a little bit earlier, and he'll make his way through, and he'll get a second place finish here in the first segment. That, again, you're gonna put three scores together at the end of the day. That's gonna be your overall score, trying to gain 100 points here before you go into day number three. Round the turn for Yaley. Almost. So, here is the reset before they'll go on to the snatches. Boy, the muscle ups, and again, you, you go back to watching them try to lock them out. That's the thing where you're an athlete and you, and you as a coach, you've seen both sides of it. You know the coach <laughs> is telling you, no, you're not there, and you're like, well, it, it feels like it. 
I, I don't know how much straighter my arms can get. I've, I've said that myself before. I, it, it happens that way. You feel locked out, but uh, I really have to hand it to all the athletes that were able to get those muscle-ups. One, because of the skill level of what it is, but two, the fact that there were they were really trying to make sure that every single rep counted. The fact that they would sit there and wait until the judge said yes is huge, because you won't see that in the younger divisions at all. I mean, or, and even in the individual division, they're moving at that point. You can see the bottom part of your screen here. They're, they have the misters working. It is a warm afternoon. Unusually warm, I think, for the times we've been up here in Madison, Wisconsin. Ah, it's chilly here in our little booth. That's I don't right. know what you're talking about. <laughs> here come the snatches. These athletes will try to grip them and rip them and get onto that run. Near part of your screen. It'll be Cure. There's Gus Vandervoort out of Arlington. Ian Buster next to him. See Will Powell right in the middle of your screen there. No hair in the, in the all brown. And he's just repping that bar. Oh my gosh, look at him go. He's still going touch and go. He's just so strong. And I really love that he's able to get that bar up high to that high thigh. That's one of the things that we lack a lot of times with athletes that are doing snatches is they short it and they barely get the, the bar over their knees. But he's got those big arms. And look at that, 20 unbroken for Will Powell as he leaves up top. We're going to say Neil Curry was there to our screen. He was kind of quietly moving along, a little bit of hesitation. Powell trying to get over that log. He's got to get around the pile <laughs> and back and over. I think he just wanted to knock it down with his chest. He wanted to chest bump it. <laughs> So you weren't specific on navigate the ball and <laughs> go through it. <laughs> now with Will, he's way ahead. So all he has to do is get within the time frame. He can see where everyone else is. Is that DeCoff on the far side? No, excuse me, that's going to be McGill. Patricia McGill on the far side for the female. She's going to make her way in. You know, you're, you're talking about a high log to jump over it here, Bill. We saw Will Powell take just a second on that final one. Similar to some of the gymnastics movements we have seen where take that extra one second because if you don't get over, if you have trouble hopping over that log, you don't want to make several attempts. You want one attempt, get over and go. How many times have you put in a workout or done in a workout where it's not a box jump, but it's a get over the wall type of thing? I mean, it is different if you're not used to that. And, I could probably almost guarantee that the majority of these athletes haven't really played with it that much. It's kind of, it's just a weird movement you don't think of. Uh, but those that have obviously have that. And if you have the height to begin with, then that's a plus for sure. And we've seen that at the games in the past. We, we can go back to Carson, California, where they did the burpees over that plexiglass wall. Oh, yeah. We've seen burpees over hay bales here in Madison. And you see it in the box where you'll have the burpee box. Get over, sweater race <laughs> at the last minute. But you'll see the burpee box get over where you may get the bands and, and, and stack 48 inches of box together. It's just another obstacle to navigate and testing that fitness. Well, and it's it's the functionality. I mean, that's something that you will, let's say you lock yourself out of your house and you got something in the backyard. You got to climb over your wall to get to that, ex that spare key or whatever the case may be. It is something that we should, I think, put more in our training, more in our programming. Uh, it's kind of something we don't normally think about. Again, they have to wait to the end until the one-minute reset begins, and they will walk back down. And there is the reset. Now it's where the fun begins, Bill. You know, muscle up has a technical aspect to it. So does the snatch, and you're pushing some weight, and maybe if you're a little banged up. You never know what's going on there. But in the row, it's row. Uh, how much do you want to hurt? And how yeah. much do you want to win this event? Yeah, I... You know, when you're looking at the, if it was a longer race, then you can really get into these, the real big efficiencies of having length. You definitely have uh, an advantage, but if this is just about power output. So don't worry exactly about how pretty it looks like. Just get moving so you can get those calories on the board. Shop Trifecta, the official meal delivery partner of CrossFit at www.trifectanutrition.com backslash CrossFit. Get 40% off with the code CrossFit. Underway for the calorie row and in the O course run and they're going to crank out the calories per hour. You see it right there. That's the second number from the top on the C2 rower. We're taking a look at Howard on your screen. Yvonne Howard out of Diablo CrossFit in Pleasant Hill, California.
Now, Howard, that's a great pull that she has going on, but she just doesn't have, she's not a power athlete like some of the other athletes. She's more of the gymnastics style. So when you start looking at some of the screens of the other athletes that are out there, you're going to see some much higher numbers. So Howard's doing her thing. I mean, Yvonne's doing great. It was great to see her working on those muscle-ups as well. Uh, but when you start comparing it to someone like Patty McGill, who has the length and the power, um, you're going to start seeing some much higher numbers on those, on those screens. We go down the lane right next to her. That's Lynn Knappman on the rower out of act, uh, CrossFit Active in Sydney, Australia. And she's been to every Masters game starting in 2010. Two times to the podium, back to Will Powell. He's got a strong uh -huh. But it's going to be one of the females. And again, that's going to be Patricia McGill. And again, Pat is able to use that length and that, that ability, that knowledge on the rower to really you know, put it to the rest of the field. When you, have the, when you have the height, that's an advantage. But when you have a lot of power and pull, then you really have an advantage. Uh, how about Patty McGill? My She's going to take the third segment all by herself. And it's going to be your females of the early lead, your first female uh, male down at the bottom. That may be Ian Buster. We'll double check that for you. Looks like at the bottom that may be Neil Curry coming across as well. Here is Chapel. And the far side, that's Georgina Jardin. And as Howard hops over the log for the fast time. There goes Will Powell. And the tank top collapsing now that he's crossed the finish line. Here come Blanco and Howard. One minute, athletes, one minute. That's going to be Tom Famery out of Green Bay, Wisconsin. That may be Chersky or Gonzalez. We'll double check for you. But coming through, that is going to be Rolando Gonzalez out of Chile. Gus Vandervoort making his way and out of Arlington, Tennessee. Lost the shoe, went so hard. That's when you know you're going fast. <laughs> Come right out of your footwear. Most of the males finishing up there is Christian Yaley. He is in. And again, they'll have to tally up three different segmented times for a total time. You hear the horn. Everyone is complete here in this event. Their day is done. Go to games.crossfit.com. But it's three segments empty the tank. And that's exactly what we had. I mean, look at this. All of these athletes, when they get down to the end, they are spent. Uh, you, know, you think it's always the long, the long events, the long workouts that are going to be the hardest, but that's not necessarily always the case. It's the ones where the intensity is ramped up through the ceiling, and that's exactly what this event was. Day number two is in the books for 62-64. Let's take a watch at Miguel, because she won this overall in the third second. I mean, she just was so strong on the rower, had no problem. I mean, we saw her earlier in the earlier uh, pieces of this, of this event, getting up over that wall with absolutely no issue. Issue. But man, when she hit that turf, she was on fire and just moving. I wish you could have seen a little bit more of her rowing just to see what you know she was actually pulling, what sort of water she was pulling. But the experience, and you, again, you have to use what God has given you, and she's got that length and that power, so this was a perfect event for it. See that sense of urgency. She's not going to coast on in. Every second's going to count here in this event like every other one. And here we go, 258.74 to finish all three segments, followed by Natman Chapel, Anne Marie Blinko did it in 338, Debbie Downing 342. So you see how the work adds up over the segments. But that's max effort. 258 is what that is. William Powell, Will Powell, 324 for his three segments, followed by Curry at 325. And five of those are sub five minutes. Shannon Aiken, though, just 627. So we'll see where this plays out in the standings. Yeah, that's a big drop for Shannon Aiken. I'm not sure what happened there, but a great showing by, Neil, Neil, uh, by William Powell. But what wouldn't you expect from the man? Go to games.crossfit.com for all the official standings and results. We continue here for the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games.
2022 Noble CrossFit Games. It's the last event of day number two here at the Align Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin for the age group divisions as we are going to move into the 55 to 59 year olds. I'm Jeff Brightwood alongside Bill Grunner, Derek Forrest on the competition floor. We've seen how this event has started out today the mixed mode madness bill and you gotta go you do have to go you got three pieces that are all going to be added up the 20 muscle ups you have your sprint you got a rest you have 20 snatches you have your sprint you have a rest and you have those calorie rows in that final sprint we've seen how ugly it's been for those older athletes i expect nothing different for these younger athletes this is going to be fun what is the recipe for success well you got to finish because those that do finish each piece no matter where they finish are going to be those above those that don't finish so that's first piece second one you got to relax to race meaning know where your weakness is and make sure you have enough gas in the tank to do the best you can in that worst event one division two groups so the females and the males all go together in lanes one two three uh, one through ten and it's going to be the female division joanne mccullough came into the leading the way we'll take a watch it's uh, shannon bunts from earlier today cc fougere Leah coates they're in lane number six and Lori mishisnik had the big finish earlier today. The males will be led by Mike Egan. He is in lane 15 coming in today, number two. Here's a look at Mike Egan in lane number 15 as he will have to try to hold off Antonio Boldrini, Leonardo winners back Lima in lane number 16. Those are the top three coming into earlier today. So about ready to start here in Mixed Mode Madness. Antonio Boldrini. Now we've seen him earlier. He had that that amazing first event with that first place finish. And apparently, it's so far what we see is if you have some gymnastic ability, that's where you really start to uh, get after it. Now he was very excited about getting to that ring. One excitement and adrenaline, but to the wind, you saw him miss that. One of the things you can see him doing is he's overshooting on those, um, on that, when his head goes through. That's one of the issues with the long straps. Maybe he's not used to training with long straps, um, but that's, I've felt that myself when you go from a short strap to a long strap. So all he has to do is tone it down just a little bit and he'll do just fine on these muscle ups. Seabold Drini, but off to the right. Now the rings are vacated by Andy Coleman. Here he comes again. You'll see how much his rings are really swing back and forth with a longer strap. There's a big timing issue. Now, we've seen uh, Baldrini hasn't come down yet. We've got a hand up in the air for four reps, three reps to go. That was 17 unbroken. <laughs> 17. Well, that's what's going down in lanes 11 through 20 in the men. Let's shift down to the women's division in lane 1 through 10. Kim Stanbaugh, 56-year-old, she is unaffiliated. And Stanbaugh has done pretty well so far in this competition. And she's trying to get through these muscle-ups. Well, she needs this event. This is a big one for her. She's in fourth place. She's 10 points out of that third place position behind Shanna Bunt. So this is a big one for her. And again, if you're looking at ring muscle-ups, she has to really put those together. Trying to finish it up. That's Antonio Boldrini, who ripped through the first 17 muscle ups. Take a little break to finish off the last three, and he'll get his way down. All three scores are going to be tallied up in this event. That will be your final score. He sprints all the way through. Very, very smart play. Did not pull up uh, whatsoever, because we've seen in the standings in the first few divisions we've done, how it does come down to less than a second sometime when you total up the three segments. Here is Lehman. as he will get his way down. In a great position for him, too. Second place right now. Now, getting up to that number one spot's going to be tough. Mike Egan has that 60-point lead on Lima, but that's a great finish for him. Leonardo winners back Lima. Again, he's at a CrossFit Crown Canal, Espirito South in uh, Santo, Brazil. Again, Uzendin has to deal with these rings going back and forth on the left side. Uzendizaga out of Spain. Back to the females in lanes one through 10. Lane number three, it looks like that's Kim Stanball on the left side, lane four on the right side, that is Alexia Feynman out of Emeryville, California. Uh, you can see uh, Kim's just having a hard time getting her head through those ring straps. Whoa, too much speed there. My log jump. <laughs> I believe that Spike Egan's gonna get his way through. Yep, Mike Egan is done here in the first with three seconds to spare. 
Now the reset. They'll have to take the walk back. They'll get set up. So the technical gymnastics movement is over. Now the barbell movement's coming up. Now you're going to get to the snatches. You know, we talk about Baldrini and the gymnastic prowess that he's had. He came out hot and, you know, jumped up, missed the rings, and that's a big jump, first of all. And then automatically, you see him swinging all over the place. Look how over, he almost missed that one there because he was overshooting that transition. Once he figured it out, got it all settled in, man, he just tore up this turf. Look at that. And this guy, look at the, he is a runner. Look, that's man. all the motivation you need, run toward the fan. Yeah, I use the fan behind you to blow you down the field and run towards the nice cool fan after that. All right, 10 seconds here we go for the snatches and then the obstacle spread. Tim Stanball here in the forefront of your screen, lane number three, Alexia Feynman just off to her right. Joanna McCullough, the third athlete down there in the white tank top and the black shorts, Kim Stanball. Bill, here's where the intensity. Look, if you're going to a technical gymnastics movement, it's intense, but you're only gonna go so fast, even if you're ripping out 17 straight. You can hang on the barbell a little bit more. It picks up, then the rower, and that you just wanna hurt. So the intensity really picks up as this event goes along. One of the things I think would really help Stanball is you're right, I know she's trying to buffer against working through these reps, but there's a lot of time in between there. But she's also really long. Look how close her hands are. She's almost doing a press up with those snatches. So if she can go wider with her grip, then automatically the bar is going to end up higher on her thigh and the, the turnover isn't as long. So she can shorten up that range of motion. Look at Alexia Feynman just to her right, stubbed a little bit there, but has a much wider grip. And stand by yesterday, a ninth, third, and a third down to lane at number 14 back in the men. That's Antonio Baldrini in the center of your screen. Just to the left, that's going to be Andy Coleman. Coleman to lane 13, number 553, five, shirtless with the black shorts. On the right side is Mike Egan. And here comes Podesto. Podesto down to lane number 20 at a CrossFit ASAP. And he's finishing this segment as soon as possible. He's out of Dixon, California. One more jump of the log and it knows way down. You know, we talked about the snatch of trying to go touch and go. If you have the strength to do that, grip and rip. You got to hold on to that thing. And that's exactly what Chris did. I wasn't able to see if there was any amount of a break, but the, the tempo that he was able to get off that bar and get into his sprint was huge. I believe that may be Leonardo Warner's bike Lima again. Well, he had a high finish in the first yes, segment. He did. So this is the second time he's going to be in that top three. Now you're going to total the three times up, but he's across. That's a great finish for him. Wow. And he's a strong athlete, so I expect him to have a good finish on the road as well. A little foot race. Don't pull up. Ah! Oh, you may have got <laughs> snuck up on him. That's Bill Celio trying to, to run him down. That may have been Andrew Zamron he tried to run down. About 45 seconds remaining here. We'll switch back to the females trying to get a finisher across. Antonio Baldrini looked like he made it across as well. And now about half the female division is in with 30 seconds to go. The seven minute mark will end segment number two, then another one minute reset. Maybe Stanball coming in, top of your screen in lane number three. 15 seconds remain. Alexia Feynman, I believe, in lane number four out of CrossFit Oakland. Final five seconds. All right, two segments due. You get a one-minute reset here. While we do have the reset, I want to let you know to shop Trifecta, official meal delivery partner of CrossFit at www.trifectanutrition.com backslash CrossFit. Get 40% off with the code CrossFit. You see that QR code on your screen. Well, you got about 40 seconds to go, and now not much technical about it on a sprint row. Look, you're doing a 5K. There's some technical stuff. Push your legs. Keep the back straight. Hinge at the hip. Don't don't bend your arms here. You, you, you lay the hammer down. Well, okay, we already had two sprints. So that's hamstrings that you just blew out. Uh, we just did 20 uh, very fast snatches, which is going to be posterior chain. You're pulling from the ground. So guess what you're doing now? Or oh, you're going to pull from the ground and you're going to use your hamstrings and have one last sprint across the field. So, yes, there are some technical things you can do, but this is just how bad do you want to hurt. I mean, you already just blew everything out. So what do you have left in the tank? 
Well, let's find out. They've got three minutes to get this road done and get down the field as Bunts on the forefront of your screen. Shanna Bunts, unaffiliated, says no one can keep up with her at home. That's why she headed to CrossFit <laughs> with her family. <laughs> And no one else can keep up with me, so I'll just, you know, wow. go to the CrossFit games. Baldrini up near 1,500 cows. They'll settle in above 1,400, but that's still pretty quick out of the gates. Well, I mean, this is what we, ex power. we expect this. You should be pulling well over one calorie per stroke for these guys, especially. You really want to drive with your hips, and I see he's got a nice big reach there. Heels aren't coming off the ground too much, and he should just be driving with those hips. But you can tell, those sprints have been taking, he went down to his hands and knees after that last sprint. So the sprints have been definitely taking the toll. He's already down to 1,100 on that, on that drag. Well, it's the worst part of a sprint. You see the, you think you're going along well. well I'm going to crush the sprint, and then the cows start going down. <laughs> Get those 10 cows left. And they're a minute into this row before they head on down for the obstacle course sprint. That's We've talked about jumping over the obstacle, the log. It's one thing if you've done some muscle ups or snatches. You've just blown your legs out. Now you have to go over a high wall. Down here, that may be the Podesto again. Boy, he's putting on a show. Yeah, he Won is. the last segment, has a chance to win the final segment. Oh, they're not having any trouble jumping over the log. Oh, a big sprint at the end for Chris. That may have been Boldrini up in the middle, but it's going to be Chris Podesto who wins another segment. So, unofficially, but a pretty good shot. He's going to win this event. Boldrini and uh, Egan is now in, in the middle of your screen. One of your first females is going to come in as well. And it looks like it's going to be Bunts. A few more of the males in, and they have one minute to go. Coming in, and that's Baldrini. Now, even though Baldrini wasn't one of the first ones in, he had that big first part of the event that just blew doors on everybody. That's the thing. So, you know, Podesto won the final two. Baldrini won the first segment. But how do the times compare? Right. And that, and that's going to be the big key. Because well, you got to have the times up. Well, the same thing we had, uh, you know, Leonardo Lima. He was in there, too. He had two second places. But what were the time frames on those compared to everyone else? There is Simpson. She'll make her way across. It's Amy Simpson out of Los Angeles, California. Do more CrossFit. I think she's done enough for the day. <laughs> On her 20 seconds remaining here in event number five for the 55 to 59-year-old division. And again, you can go to games at CrossFit.com as always. And that's going to be McCullough. Go join McCullough out of the United Kingdom. 8020 CrossFit 8020 won the semifinals. And that is it for 55 to 59 in day number two. They'll have one more day to see who is going to be the fittest in their age group. And it's, just a, it's a really cool way to test all this where you add all the pieces together. You know, we, we had the 2008 games where every second counts. And that wasn't the best way to find the fittest necessarily um, back in the day. But this is a w very cool way in this particular event to have it be that. I think that there's something to say for that every second count men counts mentality, uh, you know, even though it's, uh, that's not the overall test of the game. Well, it's also good to see max effort, short sprints, get a little time for recovery. You know, but down here on the end, Chris Podesto, if he was grabbing the hold of the barbell and ripping it off the ground, he did really well. And all of a sudden, he popped out there into the front. It was really cool to watch him look across the field and see just where everybody was. And then same thing with that row. He grabbed the hold of that handle, same thing, ripped it off that off the, uh, the end there, and then just a big finish for him. I really can't wait to see what his first piece of the event was, just to see what his total time is going to be. But what a way to finish that. You would think even if he was in the middle of the pack, his last two finishes should do enough to when the event, you never know. We're about to find out here as Sarah Magnani will go 229 to wow. do all the work. Lori Mishiznik, who had a good event earlier today in the Coliseum, really good day for her. We'll see how far she climbs up today. Those are your women's results. Down to the men, and it is Podesto, 315. Boy, he did not leave a lot of doubt. The next competitor, Bill Celio, at 350. Two, Baldrini, who won that first segment, <laughs> not so hot in the last two. I mean, you got to go. You got to make hay when the sun shines, right? <laughs> there you go. Go, Dad.
We'll see a lot of that today. That does it for the 55 to 59s. We move along here, the Noble CrossFit Games. This is the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games for the Alliant Energy Center at Madison, Wisconsin. We were in the Coliseum earlier this afternoon out at the North Park Arena. I'm Jeff Brightwell alongside Bill Grunner. A little bit later on, we'll hear from Derek Forrest. He's down on the competition floor as we get set for event number five of the weekend on day number two. It is mixed mode madness. And they mix it up. That's exactly right. 20 muscle ups for time with that sprint, a minute rest, 20 snatches, that sprint, a rest, and 30 calorie row. And then you have that last sprint and you add all that together and that becomes your score. So you have to do well in all of these. Well, you're gonna get cooked in this event. What's the recipe? Uh, well, you have to finish. Those that finish all three pieces, especially as we get into, down into these younger age groups, they will always be ahead of the overall group. And then you got a relaxed race, meaning you have to buffer wherever your weakness is. If you have something you're good at, go for it. Otherwise, make sure you're ready to do the best you can on that, on that uh, worst event. We have one master's division here on the field it's 50 to 54 but it's two different the women and the men one through ten in these lanes and that's cheryl bross in lane number five she came in as your overall leader and she has been a mainstay crossfit games meanwhile you're going to go 11 through 18 as there are eight athletes remaining in the 50 to 54 eric solon there in lane number 14 richard stevenson in lane 15 some of the athletes to keep your eye on as we get set to start i gotta keep my eye on lane 14 eric uh i'm sorry lane 16 eric smith he's in that fourth place position uh he's got that 20 i'm sorry he's in third place 20 points over the fourth position and he had two first place finishes both gymnastic oriented so i want to see what he's going to be able to do with these ring muscle ups which to me right here he looks spectacular look at the way he's controlling himself and those kips and look at that lockout at the top Boom! Locks out every single time. Man, he's confident on those rings, Jeff. He's going quickly, but does not look like he's rushing in any kind of technical movement. A lot of time, that's very paramount if you're going to finish the... Uh get the rep and stay up on the rings. Well, he has a great transition through the rings. You see him, he really leans over the top of the rings, not trying to get to the rings, but over top. But look at this big kip and a nice big pop. I mean, come on. Wow. The thing I know is we've talked about straps. You look on the right side, the straps are moving. His straps are not moving. I believe he went unbroken. 20 unbroken ring muscle ups. Meanwhile, we head down to Kim Purdy out of Canmore, CrossFit Canmore in Alberta, Canada. Now, Kim Purdy is 10 points behind uh, Cheryl Brost. We saw her just edge her out in the last event uh, with those parallel bars. So gymnastics is kind of her thing. So that's a good one for her. Minute 16 after going unbroken in 20 straight Wow, laps. that was insane. I really like the way that Kim Purdy is controlling those rings and those straps on the way up and the way down. Look at that. Sets them so that they aren't blowing all over the place. It's already windy out there. So you don't want to add to that. As you started out in gymnastics, moved on to high school volleyball and basketball, marathons and triathlons, pretty well rounded before she even began CrossFit. Sitting at 50 years old, she's one of the young guns in this division. Now you got three men in. Smith again. Stevenson is now in. Looks like Solon now in. He's shirtless in the gray shorts. See Smith and Stevenson, and now Stevenson set him. I got to hit it now. <laughs> Can't wait till after the second round. <laughs> That's a great time for all those athletes. So, you know, we were talking earlier about Eric Solon in that first place position as a 30 point lead over the rest of the field. So that's a nice score for him to have, especially with this heavy gymnastic event. Jeff Adams has been steady. He's unaffiliated out of Canada, 6'6 six, six and 5th yesterday. So he's kind of been steady Eddie throughout the weekend thus far with one day remaining. Coming through now on the women's side, going to be Marcy Wells out of CrossFit Asheville in North Carolina. That's a great finish for Marcia, too, in that fourth place position. She's got some, some points to make up if she wants to get in the top three. She's 40 points behind, so that was a big one. Less than 10 seconds, so a handful of athletes finishing on the high school gymnastics movement portion 
of Mixed Mode Madness. So, you know, we were talking about must finish all of them. I think she's is she the only one that made it through on the lady side. I believe so. So that means no matter how she finishes on the other one, if she can finish the other two, she will place ahead of everybody else, which is huge for her. But we talk about ring muscle-ups, not just do you have them, but how many do you have? Oh, all right, guys, we're going to put you 55, 50 to 54-year-old here with 50 to have to deal with. Or, I'm sorry, 20 to have to deal with. Oh, you're going to go unbroken. Thanks a lot, Eric. Now you just made me feel really bad about myself. <laughs> My goodness, that's a huge chunk of muscle-ups to get. And it's not as if he had to grind through the 20 unbroken and he just <laughs> got it into the clock. He smashed it. Smashed it. All right, 15 seconds away. We're going to go to the snatches here. No, he's still trying to shake, shake it out on the shoulders. Stand by. All right, let's start down in the women's side. Carrie Sandoval here, closest to your screen in lane number one. Julie Ackerman is next. The third athlete, Tracy O'Connell, here in the 50 to 54 year old women. Look at these touch and go for a lot of these ways. I haven't seen anybody do any drops yet, which I think is smart. This isn't the time to go for fast singles, especially with this weight. 85 pounds for the ladies, 115 for the men. This is not something that they need to do uh, or have any sort of a slow tempo. Grab that bar and get moving. And if you do drop it, you need to get back on that bar as fast as you can. And Sandoval was third last year, but she's got some ground to make up. That's why she's down to lane number one. We'll see if she can make up some points here before she goes into day number three. Again, if you watch the clock on the upper left-hand side of the screen, we're going towards seven minutes. That's going to be the mark. That's going to be the end of the second segment. Now, those at home, you have to remember, we just went through 20 ring muscle-ups, and a lot of the guys were able to finish that. So that's a lot of pulling and a lot of tension on the arms and on the elbows. So this isn't just, oh, I can do 20 reps of snatch at 115. It's after all of the other stuff on top of that. Sean Patrick coming over the obstacle course, CrossFit Counter Commercial in Encitas, California. This is big for Sean as well. Fourth place position. He's, uh, what is that, 50 points? Sorry, 20 points out of third place. Again, if you get the chance to go big, you need to go big, and you have to finish strong. And we'll have a female across. And it's going to be Gabby. Gabby was big earlier this morning. She had an early lead in that earlier event, fell off, but still finished okay. And a little foot race here. Ah. And the women's division <laughs> so able to hold her off. <laughs> Here's Cheryl Brost. And down there in one of the first two lanes, that's either Sandoval or Ackerman. And I believe that was Ackerman who comes in. One minute remaining. Again, we're going to seven minutes here before they'll get the one minute reset. And they'll go eight minutes to 11 minutes to finish things off. Well, you know some of these athletes are tired, but you still have some athletes, the, the male there in the gray shorts, trotting in. I know you gas, but again, we've seen how close this gets on the condensed segment. It's easy to look around and say no one's chasing you, but they're going to add up these times. <laughs> You're right. The, the time that you get in this isn't the end of this. It's how you, you could do damage by going slow here versus the fast ones that you had. So use this to buffer any sort of uh, dysfunctions you may have had in the other two events. Over the wall, here comes a sprint. Marianne Hugberg out of CrossFit 8500 in Denmark. Marianne comes in 8, 9, and 6 yesterday. A year ago was fifth in the 50 to 54 year old division. So we were talking about, you know, what's it going to look like when you're moving that bar? You have to grip and rip and really reduce the amount of time that you're resting. Patrick got out there, and he needs this because in fourth place position, sitting 20 points out of that third place spot, he needed to have a big, a big finish here, and not just a big finish, but a fast finish towards the end. So what I really like is that Sean was able to sprint all the way through from start to finish, didn't hold up at that finish line, and that was a great uh, event for him. You know, when the second segment, unsure where he sits overall, we're going to tally up one more segment and 20 seconds. Not much to think about. This is where you 
This is where you really increase it. Don't think, just go. Well, you don't want to think because everything hurts right now. <laughs> your arms are hurting from snatching and pulling. Your hamstrings are hurting from the sprint. Uh, back ends hurting from all the snatching. So you just need to shut off all that pain, shut out that little voice in your head, get in there and know that this is only going to be, what, 30 seconds? So get busy and then get running and you can rest tonight. It doesn't sound bad when you tell someone fresh. It's only going to take 30 <laughs> seconds. Just make 30. Anyone can hurt for 30 seconds and be okay. Look, and if you're watching, you've got a buddy at home here watching the Noble CrossFit Games, trying to get them into the method, methodology where they're already, you know, kind of fit or they want to get fit. And what, what's the thing they always, we, we said early in CrossFit, if you're trying to get someone started, they go, you can't get a workout in, in you know, four or five minutes. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, no, you can try this on for size. Yeah, well, you can do that. It'll work out just fine. <laughs> Let's go down to the women's side of the field. That is Carrie Sandoval. Big, strong pulls by Carrie. I like how she's really driving with her hips. Leaning forward to get some distance on that chain. You can see that really leans back. You don't see any disconnect with the hips go slide back first so that she leans way back. Nice drive. Big pulls and back on the men's side. Looks like Patrick again. And that's what you want. Big pulls on the rower, getting off that thing, and nice big sprint again. This is what we want. Now, I'm not sure where he ended up on the muscle-ups, but, man, these last two events have just been beautiful for him. Yeah, I'll tally him up. We're going to find out here shortly. So we're going to cross the red line, and he's in. A couple more males as we look down. Looks like that maybe Eric Smith will check that and Richard Stevenson battling. Up top, that could either be Paddock or Patrick, maybe Solon. Nope, it's going to be Exaros, Chris Exaros. Got a Bainbridge Island CrossFit in Washington. He actually grew up not too far from here over in Milwaukee. And they've got to the 11-minute mark to get in and finish this. Back over on the women's side of the field, Tia Gebby. Tia, man, I swear. You get a barbell or a rower on her. I mean, again, using that length to her advantage and, and that power. Here's Connors. Natalie Connors out of Orleans CrossFit in Ontario, Canada. Been here a number of times. Purdy is in. Boy, you can see it. That's Julie Ackerman up top. And that was Wells. It was in. That's a close-up of what you gotta you gotta hop over. It looks innocent enough to go stack something outside tomorrow <laughs> at the gym. I mean, how many people did we see just absolutely chest bump that thing and stop instantly? One of those things when you warm up, and you're like, oh, fine, I can do the box jumps or the hops, then you do something, you're like, the legs don't move. <laughs> Here's Purdy, and that'll wrap up the 50 to 54 year old age group. Every athlete is in. And boy, they went really hard on that one. That is the, oof. It may be the most, it's hard to say which is the most difficult. The, the muscle ups of the high and the, 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 the high level technical skill. But the rowing part in segment three probably hurts the most. I have no doubt. Well, I'm really anxious to see how, how Purdy ended up on that. He was only you know, 10 points behind your, your leader in uh, Cheryl Bross. So. Second, Gabby gets in there at 332 Ooh. overall. So you get the big hitters up top, Gabby, Purdy, and Bross. They continue to exchange blows going into the final day. I think that's going to put Kim and Cheryl at a tie in the next event. We're in for a fun Saturday here in this division, the 50 to 54 year old women. Let's check out the guys, see how they did. Sean Patrick, 251. Eric Smith at 503. And Xaros gets in there at 329. Well, that completes 50 to 54 year old in the Masters. We'll be back to some masters a little bit later. We continue in the age groups. We're going to the teens next from the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games.
we're going to see the future here. The team's going to give this a crack. 2022 Noble CrossFit Games for the Align Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin, out at the North Park. I'm Jeff Brightwell. Next to Bill Grunner, Derek Forrest is out on the floor at North Park. And we're going to take a look, and they're going to give a try at Mixed Mode Madness. Great setup, 20 muscle ups. Actually, these athletes are going to be going for 15 muscle ups in their age group. Uh, that sprint, then we have snatches, we have the sprint again, and then the calorie row uh, based on their, they're going to be doing 30 for them. But that sprint, that sprint has been like a key piece to really blow people's back ends out. It's been fun to watch. Well, they're young, they're 14 to 15. They got a lot of energy here. We're going to see how they get through it. Actually, it's going to be the girls and the guys that go through it together, but what do they have to do to get through it? They have to finish. So if you have the ability to do all of these, do that. You don't have to win all of them to be up at the top because if you don't finish, you're going to be below the rest of the field that do. Then you got to relax to race. Know where you're strong, get those pieces, but don't blow it all off on that because you need to do everything you can to finish each one of those three pieces. Let's take a look at the young women in lanes one through 10. And earlier today, it was Caroline Sabatini in lane number four that really put on a show for us at the Coliseum. And again, she'll be in lane number four. Moving along now to the young men, and it's R.J. Messer that just continues to move along. Had a nice battle there with Yusef Diab earlier today in Simpson, and Subiono put on a show in lane number 12. Here we go, 15 muscle ups coming up for these young women and young men. One through 10, far side of your screen, that'll be the girls division. And on the near side of your screen, lanes 11 through 20 are the young men. Right there's Tall Simpson. Uh, he's kind of the gatekeeper to the podium in that third place position. He's about 20 points or so behind Yosef and about 70. Um, and then he's a two-way tie. Uh, over Stein and Beckwith. So he's kind of sitting in that position. So d really watching what he's going to do on these rings and the, the barbell work and on the rower, it's going to be important for him to do what he needs to do and excel on these events. Tall Simpson. Let's move along and let's take a look at Riley Beebe down on the uh, young woman's side. She's 15 years old, unaffiliated out of the U.S. Boy, we called her name a lot today. You know, we did. And what's incredible is we thought kind of Lucy was going to, you know, run away with it. But right now, Lucy and Riley are tied so this is a big event for Riley if she can do this she's been tied with her or she is tied with her but I really think that she's gonna have a better showing on the ring muscle ups than Lucy will well you're looking at lanes 11 through 20 and here got the 14 to 15 year olds the boys side and quickly in 112 you'll have the muscle ups done for three of the athletes and already through the course they'll have four men and that's Stein who is through Simpson right behind him as well a couple of these athletes wrapping it up Back over on the far side. That is going to be Lily Gabrielle de Roule out of France, CrossFit Estuary. And a couple of lanes over, it's going to be, is that BB or McGonagall that got in? I believe that may have been McGonagall. Raced out of the bottom between Rarig and Kuna. And I believe that's Brody Beckwith, an unaffiliated athlete. A little bit over a minute for these teams to complete it on the muscle ups and the sprint. Maybe Reese Littlewood coming in. And there is Hill. Hill makes the sprint. So he's going to get in. And again, that's, you know, you want to win it, but it's important you mention to finish because they're going to stagger it if you don't finish one of the segments. Far end of the floor, and that's going to be Riley Beebe still out on the floor. And I can tell you, know, she's running a little bit slower than I would want her to run. It's okay. If you didn't do so well on the muscle-ups, that's fine, but you got to make up this time on the run. Uh, so hopefully she's able to come back on the next two events. She was able to get in within that time frame. That's huge, but she's got to do much better on those next two events. Far side, Marissa Nichols, Burgos Bjorn's daughter in the pants here on the right side of your screen. Now you're just trying to get reps before it's over. You saw her miss that. That was just a matter of her hands kind of coming out from underneath that chest. One minute reset. They'll have to the four minute mark. Here's where you walk around the gym and think you have plenty of time. I need to do this, this, and this. 
Want to get a swig of water? Well, no, you got to go. It's time to go for the next segment. I don't know if these guys needed that one minute rest. <laughs> <laughs> Let me look at the speed of these kids. But this is what we want. This is what it's supposed to be. Get through the ring muscle ups, and then it's an all out sprint. And I love the fact that all of these guys, they threw caution to the wind. They are all out sprinting as if someone was chasing them. It's the race. We're here at the World Championships. This is the race. 25 seconds to go, and now we're going to get onto the barbell with the snatches and then the sprint. So at the barbell, 85 pounds for the girls, 115 for the boys as they get ready to take this. Three minutes here right, to complete the snatches and get to the other end of the field. As we'll go down into the girls' division. Marissa Nichols, forefront of your screen in the black shorts, black pants. That's Burgos Bjorn's daughter. And then Lily Gabrielle de Roulet out of the out of France in CrossFit Estuary in the black shorts. So that's lanes one, two, and three. Some beautiful movement by these young women as they're working on those sets. Look how high that bar is getting to that hip crease. That's one of the things that as a coach in the gym, we try to get people to do that all the time, and people just mess that up. But these athletes, just beautiful movement, and that really, what's great about it is it uses the hips. It's not just using their arms like they've been doing in the ring muscle up. It's using their body to move that barbell. Those are amazing reps. So I'm not supposed to have bruises in the middle and the lower part of my thigh. Nope, that would be a mistake there, Jeff. You want them at the high, at the high hip crease is where you want that. That's how you mark it if, to know if you're correct or not. <laughs> Coming up close to one minute mark into segment number two. And again, it will be the O course. Hop over the log, around the pylon, hop over and back, and then sprint to the end of the field. And a lot of the females starting to peel off the far side of that floor. And that's Bjorn's daughter, top of the screen, a couple of lanes down. That may be McGonagall. So here is the race. Bjorn's daughter up and over the log makes this look relatively easy. Now can she outrace McGonagall? Should be able to McGonagall behind her, but will not be able to make the push to overtake her. So Burgeros Bjorn's daughter of a CrossFit Reykjavik comes through. Great movement by those women. Just amazing, amazing, amazing technique and form. And then, you know, we talk about Bjorn's daughter. Okay, if you're going to come from Reykjavik, what is one of the most popular videos ever done of any female athlete snatching? Oh, Annie snatching. Hmm. They probably snatched there quite a bit, huh? Right. That's why that form is so good. Great job. Less than a minute remaining here. Looks like that may be Reese Littlewood jogging in. Harvey Rarig and Yezu Kuna. Well, that's going to be Rarig that came in. Yusuf Gap. Yeah. He'll get in under the clock as well. They'll have a one minute reset. And again, I know it hurts, but you got to get across that line. <laughs> 30 Less than 30, and then it will stop at seven. We'll restart at eight, and that'll be the row. Kevin Hill just not enjoying that last sprint, I don't think. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Come on, man, you can do it. You just have one more, my brother. Come on, you can do it. I thought that was the lay there and cry meme. <laughs> <laughs> So we talked earlier about the technique and what it's supposed to look like. Look at the way all of those girls, the bar is getting right to that hip crease. That's how you utilize that power. And you can see Bjorn's daughter, the second up to the middle. Beautiful extension, lots of hip power. Smart about how she decides to break that up, shake it out and get right back to work. And then once they got to the, once they got to the, the turf, Oh man, it was just, it was lights out. All these women were just going for it. You can see Bjorn's out of top, looking back to see where she needed to go. Now granted, she's holding up a little bit. It would have been nice to have her sprint all the way through because of the time frame. but both of those women, actually all of those women had some beautiful moves. So Bjorn's daughter McGonagall, one, two in the second segment. Now we're gonna get on that rower. Row as hard as we can and then sprint to the opposite side of the field with what she got left. 
So Bjorn Zotter had a lot of power on the snatch. I'm expecting to see a lot of power put into that rower, which I'm seeing right now. Look at the big drive of the legs, big pull of the arms. Obviously, she has a lot of strength and explosiveness on the posterior chain. That's the whole backside, the back, the glutes, the hamstrings. And look at that drive. Big drive with those legs. She's pulling over oh my 14, goodness. 50 cows per hour. Stroke rate up to 30s. That's the number on the lower left side of your screen. Oh man, you know, there's, there's, <laughs> I don't want to say that there's no reason that a 14 year old girl or a 15 year old girl should be pulling it as hard as 50 year old men, <laughs> but she is ripping that cable off that flywheel. Wow. Lots of power there. Settling in under 1100. That's still a pretty good pace. If you try to do sprint rows inside your local box, that stroke rate still up over 30 strokes. You know, I mean, you can tell the fatigue is setting in. You see her leaning back. I mean, her legs are dying, but they just had that all-out sprint twice. And that she had not only a big rep set on the snaps, but also that sprint. So that's why all this is just, it's just fatiguing out. She's won one second. If she can win a second, she's going to have a good chance to win this event. They've got to total up the three times, but here come the boys at the bottom of your screen. Looks like that may be Brody Beckwith, and it is Beckwith. 11th a year ago. Well, he's already improved on that this year. A little high five. She come across the finish line, a nice sprint in a race, and that's going to be Simpson. And that black top that came across. Lane number nine, I believe that's Abigail Moore. It is Abigail Moore out of Denver, Colorado. Wow. Yusef Diab made his way in here as a race bottom of the screen, and Rarick's going to hold off Kuna for the females. I believe McGonagall has gotten in as well. Less than a minute remaining. Top of your screen in the black pants, I believe. That may have been Lily Gabrielle de Roulet. Bottom screen. Leonardo Torres, the black shorts, no shirt. He'll come across. May have been Reese Littlewood there coming across for the girls. I don't think these kids feel pain. That's a Anna Belial, excuse me. <laughs> I don't think these kids feel pain. They absolutely annihilated themselves on those three events. I love it. I believe that's Yusuf Diab right in front of the fan and hill. Woof. Okay, thank you, Kevin, for letting us all know that this really does hurt this bad. <laughs> My goodness. That, that, that's when you're like, I, I will sign it in a second. Abigail Moore edges out by about nine seconds. Burgos Bjorn's daughter and Riley Beebe intent here in this event. That's really going to cut into her points today. Oh, massive. I mean, she was in that first place position from a first to a tenth. McGonagall will see how she plays out after today with a fifth place finish. RG Mestri oh, wow. um, up at the top again. My goodness, yeah. Great position by Simpson there as well, that second place. You know, again, you, where Diab yeah, so Yosef is down at ninth, so that's a nice position for, for Tal to move up, hopefully into that second place position. So that'll do it for the 14 to 15 year old boys and girls. We're moving up just a little bit. 16, 17 year olds coming up from the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games.
They're taking the field here in the 2022 Nobel CrossFit Games of the Alina Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin. We're at the North Park Arena here on the campus. I'm Jeff Brightwell. I'm next to Bill Grundler. Derek Forrest out on the competition floor as we get set for a little mix mode madness. The madness continues. And it's a beautiful way to set this event up. We have basically a triplet in interval style using muscle up snatches and calorie row, adding up all your time together. So this is a fun one to watch and fun one to do. This is the 16 to 17 year old division as well. What is the recipe for success? So they have a little twist in this. If those of you, those of the athletes that finish all of the pieces will automatically be ahead of those that don't. So if there's a weakness somewhere, you need to be able to prepare for that. So when I say relax to race, make sure that you are ready to go for whatever is gonna be your weakness in that, in, out of those three events. Got young women, young men, all 16 to 17 year olds. So a couple of divisions going at the same time, lanes one through 10, that will be the young women and we had an incredible race between Trissa Smith and Olivia Kirkstetter earlier today inside there in lanes four and five. So we'll keep an eye on those two here this afternoon. And meanwhile, you take a look at Johan Roberts in lane 15, came in as the leader. Elijah Subiono put on a show that barbell earlier today. And I really think we're going to see something special from Subiono again. You know, he had two first place back to back here at the game, the last two events. So he has a lot of momentum behind him, which is going to be great when we're coming into 20 ring muscle ups. And I think that, you know, one of the events we look at with the out of the quarterfinals was the one that had the ring muscle ups in it. I think he's going to do really well here. And he really wants to do well so he can make up that jump. He's in that second place position right now, only 10 points behind Caleb McClure. Out of Austin, Texas. Viono's got a lot of family and friends here, so get started on the 20 muscle ups at Marty Playoff to the right side there in lane number 18. Again, these athletes are all in those long straps, and those are tough to do. If you don't have those at home, they definitely make a difference. You have to slow down your swing and your kip a little bit um, and allow the whole system to move rather than being super snappy. Bill, explain the control, Subiono. You talk about the long straps. His two staying pretty vertical up and down to the left to the right. So kind of swaying back and forth a little bit. I think it's just a matter of understanding what your swing is and keeping every single rep exactly the same. If you get some swing, some out of tempo stuff, that's where you start moving. And it'll really happen big with these long straps. Meanwhile, let's head down to the far side of the four lanes one and two. That's Haley Rolf on the left side of your screen. Coming along, let's take a look at Trista Smith. And Trista Smith got in that epic race today with Olivia Kerstetter, and Trista Smith brought home that event win. You know, I have to say this, even though Trista is sitting uh, 40 points behind Olivia, she has beaten Olivia in all in three of the four events. There was one event that knocked her down. So I think that this is gonna be a one, uh, we're gonna see another great battle between her and Olivia here. Subiono down there, I'll have to hop over and back over and get down, and Subiono is gonna take second Segment number one as he will make his way down the field at North Park. No one in sight, but wow. again, you don't want to pull up because you got two more segments that are going to be added to it. <laughs> Man, that was a great, a great first piece there, but for Elijah. Either Johan or Ty, it's going to be Ty Jenkins, who was the winner last year. Next to Jenkins, Johan Roberts is going to pull up. Now, get through the finish line, you guys. That's where the time stops. I mean, you're, you're taking potentially two to three seconds off your overall time, which, <laughs> you know. It doesn't you, seem like a big deal here. It's when you add all of it up together, you could use that sprint time to buffer any sort of illness, uh, 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 you know, downfalls you had on the, on the next two events. Marty Play, the athlete at the bottom of your screen, the black shorts making his final sprint. Nice way to finish there. Coming up on the time cap, uh, three minutes. And there is Tristan Smith, I believe, is going to be coming into your screen momentarily. A little foot race there to the line for those young men. Smith's going to have to get over and get on down. She's got 21 seconds. Oh, wow. That's big. I think she. I don't think she hesitated because she was just hesitating. I think she thought she was at the finish line there for a second. <laughs> I think she saw the uh, the uh, buoys to turn around and, and pulled up there. Olivia Kerstetter going off to the right side of your screen. 
Oh, we're gonna check chip time to see if she got in. So again, this is what's important. We have two of the lady athletes that finish the ring portion. They have to, if they finish the other two, they will automatically be ahead of the rest of the field. But Elijah Subiona, look at the way he worked these rings. So strong on the ring, big pop of the hips. Didn't have to, didn't even end up in a low dip. Just a slight dip up at the top. It's a lot of pulling power. And then once he got to the to the turf, look at that. No problem getting up over that. Just you know, like a bunch of springs on his feet, popping himself up over that log. Great finish for him. So Elijah Subiono wins it for the boys. And I believe it was Haley Kantak that got in just under. We'll see. They'll have to check the chip timer to see if she got in and finished. We know Trista Smith got in in plenty of time in the first segment. All right, they've got 10 seconds, and we're going to get on the barbell. So we know like on the on the women's side here, Olivia didn't do so well on the rings, but you get a barbell in her hand, it's gonna be a whole different story. So I'm sure we're gonna see something special uh, by Olivia. Same, but same thing with Tristan too. Uh, Tristan's, I mean, she's strong with the barbell as well. Well, you wanna hang on as much as possible. You hear some barbells dropping right now. And these teams are going 135 and 95. There is Smith, there's Kerstetter Smith in the black shorts and Kerstetter in the camo. Look at that. Olivia having no problem with that barbell. Looks like Trista just is straining just a little bit. She can get her butt down a little bit lower on that pool. Use her hips a little bit more instead of all the low back. Again, we have to row really hard after this. So you want to use your hips rather than having your back blow out. Look at Olivia move that barbell. Big pop of the hips. Lots of explosiveness out of those. Jim Smith here in the black shorts. Kerstetter in the camo on the right side. The two year top. Kerstetter is through. Did it in 505. Wow. Rather 105, excuse me, the total time there. Now she just has to navigate the obstacle course. Winner from last year. And she is just one of the young guns in this division. She can still go 16, 17 <laughs> next year, regardless of all the chatter about she could have gone individual this year. She can come back another season. I mean, you know, a lot of you know girls obviously mature sooner than 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 the men do. Uh, but you get some of these young, really amazing athletes, and you have them mature a little bit. And they're still in this, in these teen divisions. Man, they're just going to be unreal when you add a couple years on them. On Ronnie Phillips. Gets ya. Out across it, Maven in Rochester, Michigan is in. Zubiono is in, so he's completed two segments. I believe he was second in that segment, so he should be sitting pretty well here going into the row. Up at the top, we just saw Trista Smith get him across as well, too. So that's two of the three that she completed. And again, there were only two of the women that completed that first part with the muscle ups. Now that's going to be very key because it is teared down. Jenna McElhotty came across here at the lower part of your screen. Rugby Goodenson got a CrossFit Reykjavik. Another rising star out of that box in Iceland. Benjamin Concha. Here he comes through. About 15 seconds left here. It'll stop at minute seven. They'll get the one minute reset. We will start at minute eight, and that's when they will get on the rower and the final sprint. As they like to say, that's when the fun begins. <laughs> All right, one minute break here. Shop Trifecta, it's the official meal delivery partner of CrossFit at www.trifactanutrition.com backslash CrossFit. Again, that's trifactanutrition.com backslash CrossFit. Get 40% off with the code CrossFit. So right in the middle there, Olivia Kerstetter. We knew that once she got her hands on the barbell, she was going to be absolutely deadly, and she did not disappoint. Look at that big barbell to the hip crease, big explosiveness with those hips to get that bar overhead. And then once she was out there, she was all by herself. Had no problem getting up over that log, and then a nice sprint down to the finish. This was a great finish for her because she needed this since she didn't finish the, the muscle up segment. So again, when we're looking at buffering those time pieces, that was a big and needed uh, position for her. 10 seconds. 
Lots yeah. of power from Olivia. We saw that on the barbell. We knew that that was going to happen with the barbell, but we should, I expect to see the exact same thing here on the rower. Big drive of those legs, big pull of the back. We know how strong her posterior chain is. Uh, she's going to have a good finish here as well. So Kerstetter on the left side, 161. That's Sophia Shaft on the right side of the Farmington Hills, Michigan. And Sophia Shaft, same thing, has had some amazing finishes. Two first place finishes, to be exact, in a third place on the gymnastic event before this. Her, her lowest event was the long event with all the running in the in the rope climb. So another, these three women right here, Trista Smith, Olivia Kerstetter, and Sophia Schaft are, have been battling themselves all, all weekend long, and I expect to see that the rest of the weekend. Big race here. Take a look at the polls. Still over 1,200 cows per hour. Stroke rate up. Subiano is over 1600 and settling in around 1500 38 to 39 strokes Again, already at 24 cows like you got to get after it and he's doing exactly what he needs had a great run on the rings had a great deal with the snatch and then here we are moving on the uh on that roar but he's not alone look at all these other wow. guys that are already off 16 to 17 year olds ripped it on the rower subiano quick hop quick spring not going to win this segment, but he may have done enough. We will see. And that's going to be Jenkins who comes across. Ty Jenkins, last year champion out of Branson, Missouri. Down low, that's Rugby Goodmanson across. I believe that was Caleb McClure who comes across. It's Subiano across. Concha playing. Looks like Kerstetter up top in the women's division and she is going to be in now they're going to have to tally up some times and i'll be interested to see between trissa smith and olivia kirkstetter but kirkstetter remember as you mentioned did not finish that first segment yeah it'll be really interesting to see how it all plays out there's trissa smith coming across there in the black shorts who's i think she's running home run for us run I thought i'm running there, <laughs> there you go that's what she's running for <laughs> i'm running for water right now <laughs> <laughs> well, while they finish up again, don't forget Shop Trifecta, the official meal delivery partners of CrossFit at trifectanutrition.com backslash CrossFit. Get 40% off with the code CrossFit. And I don't know if you saw that sly, very mature, experienced technique there, trying to throw her, her ankle brace across, or the, uh, the chip timer across before the other athlete. Well, the horn sounds. Everyone is in. Oh, there you go. That's it. <laughs> An ice bath. <laughs> Man, it, you know, it's no joke. It is hot out there. And so these athletes are doing everything they can to cool themselves down. <laughs> yeah, we'll check final results here in a minute. This is rugby goodness. We talked to him yesterday after the long run. Was impressed with those dumbbell snatches. Okay, uh, Olivia Kerstetter, 323.61. Krista Smith, a 657. We'll double check that though. Huh. Olivia, nice job though. Way to finish strong. Those last two events, she just absolutely crushed it. Now to the males. Goodmanson, 355. Petku, Subiono is in fourth. Get for all the official results, go to games.crossfit.com. Tell you how they did and the official times and where they stand after day number two. They've got one day left. Well, that was go and blow. See where you go as fast as you can. The teens are done for day number two. We're getting back to the Masters here in just a moment. This is the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games.
Outside at North Park Arena, the Align Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin, the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games are wrapping up day number two of competition, one day remaining. I'm Jeff Brightwell, alongside Bill Grunner, Derek Force out on the competition floor. Headed back to the Masters Division, 45 to 49 year olds as they take a look at Mixed Mode Madness. It is a beautiful triplet set up into intervals with muscle ups, snatches, and calorie rows with that sprint and that one minute basically worthless rest right in between <laughs> um, as we try to add up all the time it takes to do all of those pieces of work. Now you're going to get toasted here, but what's the recipe for this? Well, you have to finish and I, what I mean by you must finish is there is a sprint that goes to the end of the field, the time is constantly clicking. So don't stop before you get to that finish line, run all the way through and then relax to race. You need to make sure that you're able to get through that last sprint. So if there is a weakness somewhere, tend to the one before that so you have enough gas to get through that uh, that weakness that segment. Well, you've got again 45 to 49, so we have both divisions. The women are in lanes one through 10. Jennifer Dieter put on a show earlier today. She's in lane number seven as we come outside here for event number five. And then lanes 11 through 20, that will be the men. Jason Grubb, Mike Kern, Vlad Leskovich. They were a lot of fun to watch earlier today inside the Coliseum. But now we are outside, and there's Mr. Kern. Yeah, Mike Kern, Jason Grubb tied in points. Uh, but Mike is sitting in that second-place position just because Jason has two of those uh, first-place wins. Now, this is something that I think Mike's going to do really well, and he can work himself through those muscle-ups. I know he's going to rip that bar off the ground. He's just so strong and powerful. Oh! But if you have to deal with the wind, that can really mess you up. So we'll have to see what kind of you know, fortitude and mental toughness he can hang with as he's trying to reorganize those straps because those long straps can get really dicey at times. We've seen one athlete go 20 unbroken already today, but they've been very few. In fact, I think we've only seen the one go, the 20 unbroken. So we have Jason Grubb just to the left of Mike Kern there. You can see Jason looking very smooth. Kern really trying to control those rings, and he's got that swing finally down. So he's actually nice and centered here as he's working through those muscle ups. But look at that big pop by Jason Grubb there with the orange wristbands. Nice big pop, nice lockout at the top, making sure every one of those count. That's Grubb on the left, shirtless with the black shorts on the right side is Mike Kern. Kern breaks the chalk up. Jason Grubb going. Three reps to go. We might see another unbroken set. Oh, and this is a big strain here. Now, this is the risk. Do you do you roll the dice to see if you miss it, or do you come down and ensure that you get it? We got it. Jason rolled the dice. Way to go, my friend. Got to know your vehicle. Now navigate the obstacle course. And the key on the obstacle course, it's, it's, we're, at the, we're at the point in the Masters now, the 45 uh, to 49. They should be able to navigate it with no issue, hop over the log, get around the pylon. The thing is, make sure you get all the way through the line. Got to get through that line. So again, Jason has that nice big sprint, not really pulling up too much. I mean, he could have run a little bit further just to get an extra second. But again, that was a great finish, and there's really no one behind him. About a minute 43 or so unofficially. Now down to the females. Looking down there to Kerry Riger or Kieran McAdam down on that far side. It's right there in the purple hair. That's Suizy. And again, I'm looking at her. To, she really needs to do something here to try to get up into that position. So she's 20 points out of first. She's really she's decent at the gymnastics. Oh, that was just a matter of her arms not staying tight to her body on those ring muscle-ups. But I really think that she has a decent shot uh, with these three events, with the dump, with the barbell work, and as well with the rings. But she needs to do this to stay up in that position. She's currently in that third place. You know, Swozy did a really nice job earlier today. She can have finished first in the semis. And Swozy, remember, had a very good event earlier today in the Coliseum. We got a CrossFit Majestic. That's in Chandler, Arizona. 2019, she was 6. 2017, the 20th place finish in the 40 to 44s. Little break for Swozy, and here come another couple males will make their way in. Laskovich, I mean, Laskovich got his way in. Back to Swozy. Four reps remaining. But she will not be in first. Oh. They nearly had a female make her way in. And down there will come up just a little bit short. But Jason Grubb shows exactly why he's the two-time returning champion. 
He just does his thing all the time. Impeccable movement. Just doesn't get rattled. Look at this. Now, here, here he come with 15 reps to go, and the countdown's on. You know that you're losing your grip. You can see him slowing down on his kip. Big pop there, and this is where you start thinking about it. Do I just let go or do I hold on? Nice lockout and still keeps on going, ensuring every single one of the positions. Big pop of the hips, lock the hands to the body. Nice kip and lockout. Man, that was amazing. And then once he got on the turf, it was all Jason. Did his thing and did exactly what we talked about. Must finish getting through that finish line and getting that good time on the clock. So Jason Grubb for the men. Karen McAdam was the female that got the most reps and nearly got across the finish line. Here in lane 14, Jason Grubb again, but let's switch down to lane number six. Marina Novelli on the barbell right there on the front of your screen, just to the right side of Novelli is Jennifer Dieter. Yeah, Novelli, look at that, 95 pounds. It looks like it's 55 pounds away. She's just handling that bar. Again, I really like where she's, she's going really wide with her hands. That automatically brings that bar up to that hip crease and shortens the range of motion to get it up overhead. But she is really moving that bar fast, almost to the point where she was pulling the bar back down rather than just letting gravity take over. Not quite sure what Novelli was asking the judge about pointing down the field. May have just been wanting to confirm a numerical count. I believe she's around 12 or 13 reps right now, but Dieter powering through as well. There's finally a break for Dieter. Hundred and thirty five pounds here for the guys. You can see them being very smart, switching off to uh, quick singles. Mike Dudevor, Andrew Kettleson, Justin Lasala, these athletes in 17, 18, and 19 at the near side of the field. Lane number four, I believe that's Allie Crawford. Up and over for Crawford. And it is Crawford out of the United Kingdom. CrossFit East Kilbride. That's a blazing fast time with that barbell and still with that sprint. Great job. Next female. We'll take the turn and here we go back to the male division. Yuri Hansen, Sean Potter down there. We'll see who that is. And Kern is in. Hansen is the athlete that just edged him. Yuri Hansen out of Billings, Montana. Now Swozy will make her way in. So second in that segment. But again, it was Karen McAdam who would have gotten the most reps in the first one. She got within just a hair of the finish line, getting across Jennifer Dieter this time. Lane three, Jessica Manfro up high. 36 seconds remaining here in the time cap. Yeah, these athletes are just getting, I, I don't want to say that the weather is really, really bad. I mean, it is definitely hot out there, but you can tell the effects that the weather is having on all these athletes. Just sitting out here in the sun is literally baking them. So there's a nice breeze, but it's hot. And when you get down there on that turf, that temperature just really ramps up and you can see all these athletes are getting beat by that, by that hot temperature. Cap coming up, Lasala's gonna make it in and they'll have a one minute reset. So they got one minute to get back down. Now we're gonna get on the rower. But before that, we wanna let you know to shop Trifecta, the official meal delivery partner of CrossFit at trifectanutrition.com backslash CrossFit. Get 40% off with the code CrossFit. Check that QR code on your screen. So 40 seconds and now it's the matter of go and hurt. Well, we've already seen at the end of that last sprint just what sort of damage the weather conditions and the power output between the ring muscle-ups and the snatch and the, and the sprint are doing to these athletes. So many of them are ending up hands on the knees or just you know hands and knees on the ground. So this is the final one. Now they have to grip and rip that handle on that rower, which is already painful to begin with. But you have to go to that dark place because you need to get those 30 calories as fast as you can and then you have one last sprint. The light at the end of the tunnel is that this is the last thing you have to do today. So you can get in your ice baths and cool down. You can get to your recovery. You can get some rest. Here you go. Big balls for these athletes. They'll start off pretty high and then try to hang on for those last 10 calories and then make their way down. 
Here's Gruff, over 2,000 cows, and she's already got eight cows in the bank. Look at that, that's some heavy duty pulling. Now one of the things that Jason does, it doesn't look like he's working really hard, but he's locked in. So automatically, arms are locked out, his hips are driving back. That's a lot of drive with those hips and legs. Big, strong back pull, still staying up over that 1700 mark. Halfway there. This is where you just close your eyes and you just keep on going. Just stay exactly what you're doing, knowing that you'll be done and then hope you can get off that rower and have some sort of sprint left. Well, there was no consistent tail down. Once he settled in between right around 1750, that's where he's been holding there. You see the hands go up way down there. Down here, lane number 19, that's Mike Budivore. Out of Swampscott, Massachusetts. Collegiate soccer player. And now you take a look at Kern in the middle of your screen, making the turn around the pylon. Looks like Grub too. But in late 19, Mike Dudevor, he's going to take segment number three, and we'll see how much that helps them once they tally the three segments up. Kern is in. That's a big one for Mike Kern. Grub will come in shirtless there in the black shorts. And you see more and more of the male athletes come in. They've got until the 11-minute mark, just still over a minute until the time cap for everyone. Looks like Crawford. And up high will be Crawford. Bertulli Callio, I believe, is in as well. And here comes Swozy. <laughs> she looks done for the day. Okay, I'm done. I'm gonna punch my ticket out for the day. Thank you so much for coming. Jessica Manfro came in. It looks like that's Jennifer Botcher up near the top of your screen. She'll come in. 40 seconds remaining in the cap. Maybe Kieran McAdam is in. Sarah Quiroz out of Brazil. She's unaffiliated. And Botcher both in in lanes one and two. That may be Botcher, it may have been Kiro's that came in a little bit early. Regardless, there's the horn. It means everyone has finished event number five, Mixed Mode Madness. Well, when everyone collapses, he just gives you a thumbs up, walks, <laughs> signs a scorecard. <laughs> That's like the statement, I'm going to walk, and then Miko say hello. I'm not going to let the workout. I'm going to show my other competitors I'm going to walk, but inside you're just screaming. There's Allie yeah. Crawford, 327, the unofficial time, followed by Novelli and Swozy. You know, we thought Swozy did pretty well, and that, that, was a, that was a great one for her, but Allie Crawford, what a way to finish towards the top. 30 seconds over the rest of the field. Wow. Now let's take a look at the men. Dudevois won that last segment. It pays off 335. Alan Bates, Andrew Kettleson, Grubb. There's Kern in six. That's, you can't quite judge every time you see someone in a segment because it's combined it, time. It's really hard to tell, especially when you have, you know, a minute and a half difference between Kettleson and Grubb. Like it, I would have not expected that. But again, it's over the course of three events. You know, 15 seconds here, 15 seconds there. That all adds up. Two heats remaining here in the age group division at the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. Two Noble CrossFit Games from Madison, Wisconsin at the Alliant Energy Center or inside North Park Arena, wrapping it up event number five on day number two for age groups 
and adaptive divisions. I'm Jeff Brightwell. Bill Grundler is my broadcast partner. Derek Forrest down on the competition floor. We've seen this one today, and we have seen the we've seen it lay waste to athletes. Mixed boat madness. Well, I just think it's the fact that it's such high intensity, and it's an integral style. So you get that one minute rest to ramp it back up, and it makes it really nasty. All right, to get through it, and again, you've talked about the importance. You break it up into three segments, but the recipe for success. Well, you, you, gotta, you must finish, and the must finish is you finish through the finish line. Don't just coast through the finish line. This is all a, a matter of adding up time frames, so get all the way through it as fast as you can. Then relax to race. You know you're going to have a weakness somewhere. Do the best you can to buffer that weakness with as much uh, effort as you can on the other ones, but get yourself moving. All right, you've got the men and the women here in the division. One through ten, that's the women's division. Jen Ryan comes in as the leader. Had a nice finish earlier today. Rebecca Boyd Miller trying to stay in competition. Had a fourth place finish earlier today. Kelly Friel. It's a really good race in the top half of the women's division. So we'll keep an eye on that. Lanes one through ten over on the men's side. At 11 through 19. Rudolph Berger there in lane 15. You take a look at Aaron Belfelt and Pat Lawani down in lane 18. But we are going to go ahead and key on here down to Jen Ryan. So Jen Ryan is her currently sitting in that first place position. She's had two third places and two uh, first places back to back. So she's got some momentum behind her. Gymnastics has been a great thing for her. She's shorter. So that's going to play well on the ring muscle up and the snatch. It might hurt her a little bit in the row, though. So we're going to have to see just what she can do on these high intensity intervals. And we're off to the rings for the muscle-ups. Again, you can see her almost overshooting on those rings with those big, long straps. So those long straps, it forces you to change your kip. You have to slow it down a little bit and let the swing kind of take over rather than trying to be snappy. You can't really have a snappy kip on a long, uh, on a long strap because if you watch the straps, they wobble back and forth. So that those rings move up and down a lot. So you really just need to kind of tend to that, uh, that swaying motion as you work. And Jen Ryan, see at what point, if she wants to break it, it's right there. And that was smart. I think, you know, you, again, you don't want to fail any of these. Uh, I love the way that she had enough composure to come down when she was wanting to come down rather than failing to come down. And she set the rings as well, too. So about a minute in, got to settle those rings down, a little wind out here this afternoon. I love the way she whips her head and torso up over those rings. There's a lot of power there. We'll move down between lanes 11 and 20. It's the men. And our first competitor, that's going to be Lyco Leverrier out of Quebec, CrossFit RDL. Had an event win last night. Finished first in the semis. He's going to be through. So Leverrier is a little stumble there. Still going to be good enough to get second in this segment. You know, it's crazy. This is one of those things where you talk about, is there a weakness somewhere? These are very specific movements in the ring muscle up, especially with that heavy duty number that they, that they have to complete. So the athletes that have that in their wheelhouse, that's awesome. Those that don't, guess what? When they go home after this week, guess what they should be working on? The one thing that they just got handed while they were here. That, that should be what their emphasis is. Not just the things that make you feel good, the things that you did really bad at. Jonathan Varela was the second finisher in the male side and in under the cap and plenty of time. Gillivet out of Let's Go Baby in France CrossFit. One oh. round for Ryan just couldn't get the momentum up for it. It looked like she got the head through, but just wouldn't continue. Well, she has to have that nice big pop, so you really have to really big pop and squeeze up at the top. So that was great. You could tell she got her hands underneath those shoulders to enable the, herself to do that push up over top of that. 21 seconds. I don't think that's going to be enough time. I think she realizes it now because she's going to go up and over the log. And Oh, I see Becca back in there, too. Well, Rebecca Voigt Miller hanging in there, so they should be 1-2 in the segment, although she was that close, I think, to getting over the line. Yeah, that was a close one. That was a great run by Jen. 
So we see Berger right there working his way through. Jolive off to the right. And on the left hand side, man, look at the way he just worked his way through there. That's Lavarera, made himself all the way through the, those ring muscle ups, just nice and strong. No problem hit here at all getting up over that log. It was just kind of, I don't want to say it's in the way, it was just barely in the way. And he just moved along that floor. He didn't have anyone even around him and he was moving. Did a nice job using his momentum. He went over the log and continued to make the circle around. We've seen some athletes spring stop and go back the same direction. Hey man, you're a big dude, use the momentum. <laughs> don't stop. Here we go on the snatches near on lane number one, Julia Roggio out of CrossFit 548 in Roma, Italy. Followed by Maya Brandt, you see Ojala, third athlete down. Already starting to see some different, some different tactics working for either fast singles, as we see with Brandt there, uh, or trying to go some touch and go, or deciding to go a couple at a time. So you can do sets of three, take a break. Sets of three, take a break. But it looks like Kane Hayes right there with the side tattoo is going to go a much bigger chunk before he decides to let go of that bar. Man, he gets right back on it, too. That's quick. Ooh, that, that may have been Michael... The very area we just saw who stumbled out of the gate, but he's leading it. Should be okay to win this segment. Well, you know, two segment wins is going to be pretty good. They're going to total up the three times. We should be feeling pretty good here, but still got to get that row done. Now, this is where I talked about relaxed to race. He knows he has the most painful piece coming up. He's well ahead of the group. So that was a nice way to just kind of there. Yes, finish. I want you to finish, but you'll pad against what's going to be coming up. You just had a big win on the first segment. Now you can kind of relax a little bit so you're not hurting the way everyone else is going to be hurting as they're trying to sprint to get that, that better time in. Kelly Friel, the first female through in segment number two. And next to Friel, it been Julia Kenyon may have come in. Now a few more females making their way in. 14 seconds remaining. Or actually, excuse me, a minute 10 remaining. We'll go to the seven minute mark. Jolly in and lean number three out of Finland. Justin King comes in out of Walker, Louisiana. There's Berger. Jen Ryan. Rogio on lane one. That's who we saw when we started the second segment of the snatches. Lane two, that's Myra Brandt out of Delray Beach, Florida. She'll make it in under the three minute cap. Final 30 seconds. So again, the athletes, regardless even if everyone finishes a segment, will have to wait until the horn for the reset. Cannot go ahead and Walk on down, double check your row, or your little, <laughs> maybe it's a little more humid outside to chalk up, get a swig of water. Everybody's going to have the same minute to walk down the floor. You know, I, I'm surprised we don't see any of these athletes trying to, like, see if they can go get some water to dump on their head or try to cool down. I mean, it's it's warm out there. Uh, King, you see how just how hot he is steaming off him right now. And for someone like King, we have that last row coming up. So he's a big, powerful athlete. Uh, you know he's just going to be shredding that flywheel with that, with that uh, cable. Right now you just walk and try to breathe as deep as you can, slow your heart rate down as much as, as possible before you get right back at it. Shop Trifecta, official meal delivery partner of CrossFit at trifectanutrition.com backslash CrossFit. Get 40% off with the code CrossFit. Check out that QR code on your screen. All right, time to saddle up into the old rower, lock down those feet. Now, here's the thing. You know you're going to be able to come out, but because it's such a an aggressive set, like normally I would tell athletes, just have your feet hooked in. You don't need to lock them down real tight, but because you need to get after it on this row, and it doesn't take that much to unhook yourself, lock in so that you can make sure that you are as connected to that rower as possible. That's going to help you get as much calorie input and er, uh, wattage input to that, that machine as you can. 
Big pull here. I believe that's Jen Ryan with the sun right behind her on that back. Up over 1,900 cows, 37 strokes a minute here. 13 cows in on this rower. That's Lavriere. Man, he is just hammering that rower. Look at that. Big, strong. Now, one of the things he could do is keep his heels flat a little bit so we can use more of his hips. Those are going to be stronger than your than your quads. Don't worry, you want that seat touching the hill. I know it's a sprint. Back down other end of the floor in the women. That's Kashka Ojala. Athlete 4 9. Back to the men. Here comes the race. Three person race here on the O course portion. It's going to be Hayes. Hayes on the right side of your screen, hopping back over the log. Black shorts, no shirt. Hayes through the pylons. Kane Hayes will be just ahead, so he'll win segment three, but will it be by enough to overcome the two segments? The one that were won earlier by Michael Laverriere. And Laverriere, there he is, just kept barely making it across. Oh, that was much slower than what we saw the last two uh, uh, sprints that he had. Down to lanes one through ten. It's the females right there. That's Kajio Jalan, lane number three. Getting in, though, Rebecca Voigt Miller. And there she goes across. And lane number four next to her, Kajka is across. Looks like that may be Julia Kenyon in lane seven that gets in. And Ryan is in. Go back down the floor. That's going Rogio and Brandt. Brandt will be coming into the screen right there. Rogio back. Second. Jump over the log through the pylon. She'll make her way down. She'll get in under the cap. And again, they will add up all three times. And that will be the total working time. That will be the score for the athletes. Everyone has finished under the cap. Well, I tell you what, it's really cool that all those judges are not only making sure that they got scored right, but they have athlete control guys that are coming around handing out water to either get it in them or on them, either way, because it's hot. You can see these athletes all going by the fans. You know, they have the misters by the fans. They're trying to cool off whatever they can. But uh, this is a tough day for these athletes. Well, tough day. We, we've talked about it before. One of the good things about CrossFit, the CrossFit Games in particular, is that if you're out here, regardless of what your job, you're a CrossFitter. Oh, yeah. They know exactly you know. how they feel. It may not have been at that level. They've done interval training in the oh, gym, yeah. in the heat. They know exactly what they're going through. All right. We have two divisions to look at, so let's see what the numbers say in the women's division. Who comes through? Kelly Friel at 310 over Kelly Marshall and Juliet Kenyon. So those are the top three here at 310, the top time after they added them all up. Let's go to the men's side. Justin King over Michael Laverriere. 332 for Justin King. Well, final heat coming up. And it is a warm one. And it's going to be the final set of men and women. 35 to 39 on the way for the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games.
Last heat of the day here at the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games at Lion Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin to wrap up day number two of competition for adaptive and age group athletes. We're at the North Park Arena. I'm Jeff Brightwell, Bill Grunner alongside. We'll talk to Derek Forrest a little bit later down on the competition floor. And for the last time today, we're going to take a look at Mixed Mode Madness. It really is a wicked interval triplet with the muscle ups, the snatches, and the calorie row. We get to test everything here. How's your weightlifting? How's your gymnastics? How is your monostructural? We're going to find out. So that is what they have ahead of them and the recipe for success. Well, you got to finish. It's a race, not just from the start and how many you get, but all the way to the end. So sprint all the way through that finish line because it's a cumulative time for everything. And then you got to relax to race. You have to know where your strengths are and, and have at it. And if you have a weakness somewhere, you want to try to buffer that as best as you can, building up into that. Uh, that event. We'll have the men and the women starting off links 2 through 10 for the women. It's Cristela Debs who was the leader coming in today. Melia Lapinen had an impressive performance earlier today inside the Coliseum. There's China Cho in lane number 7 and Carly Matthews Hit a home run earlier today at lane number 10. Here is 11 through 19. This is the male division. Roy Gamboa in lane number 15 came in. So here is the women's side of the bracket. Now, Christelle L. Debs is currently currently sitting in fourth place. She's about 20 points behind the podium, which is China Cho. Uh, she needs a big event here, not only in the ring muscle-ups, but also on the row. She's a strong athlete. She really needs to put that to work so she can hop up onto that podium. Now to simply CrossFit in France, and L. Debs able to get on the rings there as they settle down for her, and she's able to get into that first muscle-up. Nice big pop. You can see she has that false grip. That false grip is where the knuckles are up over the top of the ring. That helps her to get those elbows to pop up over the top. She's not getting blocked by her wrist. Beautiful position, though. Nice big kip. You can see her hip pop, getting those hands underneath her armpits and keeping them nice and tight. We see a lot of times that uh, when someone misses a ring muscle up, it's because the hands just don't stay close to the body. And they get up there, but they just can't hold on to it. Lane 14, moving on to Josh Burundi, right in front of you. Next to him in lane 13, Brett Stanhope on the left side. Right side, that's uh, Rogelio Roy Gamboa. Now, Burundi's in that fourth place position. He's 10 points tied for, I'm sorry, tied for third place uh, with Julian Cernan. These guys have been kind of battling back and forth, but I really think Burundi, a little bit more power on the on the weightlifting and on the row and better on the rings than Cerna. So this is an event that uh, really Burundi really needs to kind of have at it, which he's doing right here. Look at that, 20 unbroken. Well, he's got Stan Hope next to him. Here's the race and a couple of men down here. Justin Hayes or Aaron's in lane 19, bottom of your screen. Oh. Quick hop, here comes the foot race. And that right there is what we're talking about as far as finishing. You gotta finish all the way through. Just like there was a tape. You don't stop at the tape, you gotta run through the tape. Is that Giannis Papadopoulos up top that won that or was that Cerna? That's there the top half of those lanes for the males. But what a race Man. here on the muscle up portion. I'll tell you what, if that was Papadopoulos, then the field is ruined because barbell and rowing, that guy's going to absolutely wreck that stuff. Uh, could have been Stanhope as well. Back on the opposite end, Anita Tucker for the women. When you can't, you can't make assumptions when you watch this, Bill. We've seen some athletes win two of the three segments, but the outlier really cost them, so it was Cerna. Cerna is in. So that was Papadopoulos. Wow. Man. The biggest, strongest guy comes in that much on the ring muscle up part. Uh-oh, look out, guys. He's so tall, he may have just hurtled the logs. <laughs> Less than 30 seconds left. Here's China Cho. See if that's enough time to get over the log and back and down. We saw it get cut close about the same time frame in the prior heat. Think she's going to get it. And she will. And Ooh, that's nice. Yeah, right behind China, I believe, is Angelica Bingston. You know, China, I, she wants that. You know, she's coming in that third place position. Uh, she's got about 20 points cushion between uh, her and, and L. Debs, but. 
you know, again, she wants to be up at the top of the podium. She's a competitor. So that was a great way to, for her to handle that uh, that first part of the event. Amelia Lappinen got in. There was Anita Tucker trying to finish. Man, but I just wasn't necessarily expecting everyone on the guys' field to be this close. I mean, there had to have been the majority of this group unbroken. But look at that foot race. That's what we're talking about. You need to finish. You need to finish strong, hard, and fast, just like that. Papadopoulos won. If Wong does not trip going over the long, Wong may have beat him, <laughs> but I don't know. Papadopoulos still has those long legs in a straightaway sprint. Okay, so here we go. Now, this is the thing. Papadopoulos, if you put a barbell in this guy's hands, it's just going to be ridiculous. I, 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 this will, it has to be, if, it's, if it isn't, I'll be shocked. An unbroken set of 20. Stand by. There's Papadopoulos, Carly Matthews had a second place finish earlier today. That's the female only number 10. Now Papadopoulos there, your first male. Now look at the way he's moving. Papadopoulos there right in the middle of your screen. You can see Cerna who's getting the barbell to the hip crease, not Papadopoulos. This is all arms and all back. He's not even using his hips. This weight is so light for him. Look at this. Well, you're That's just, called a muscle snatch. <laughs> you're, just, you're muscling it up. You're just now starting to see a slight dip. Just now. It just doesn't even need to. He's so strong and so powerful. I mean, when, when I knew that he was going to be in this group and Sam Dancer was here as well, I was like, those were the two big lifter, the heavy hitters. But when he wins the ring element and then he handles the barbell element, um, this is going to be a big one for him. My goodness. 45 seconds. If you want to try it at your local box, 45 seconds to go 20 unbroken, 135-pound snatches. Insane. He's looking around. Yeah, you're the only one. <laughs> you're right. Well, now here's where you can get burned. We've seen people win two segments but not win the event. Well, okay. Yes, most of the time. But he's got the rower. We have the rower left. He's the tallest guy out there. He's the strongest guy out there. I don't see him being the slowest guy on the row. And if he can kind of hold back a little bit here, uh, then he can sprint when he needs to. Need to tuck her in. Well, he may have been pulling the Larry Bird of the three-point contest. Look around <laughs> just say who's playing for second. <laughs> That was big for Anita Tucker, too. Again, she's in first place, so this is a nice position for her to be in. I mean, we haven't seen China come through. She got it in the first segment. Like you said, we'll double check and see if China, where she sits here. She is in lane number seven. She may have made it through. I believe she did. I think you're right. Stretch out those hamstrings. Getting ready to row. Here is lane 19, Justin Ahrens. Lane number two, Victoria Finn Smith. Got a CrossFit all out in the United Kingdom. I mean, look at that. Again, muscle snatching. That bar never even hits his body on the way up. This is after doing 20 unbroken ring muscle ups right before this. So, no problem on a grip issue there but then he just coasts. Now I'm thinking, we saw how fast he could sprint earlier. I think this is okay. I'm reining back so that I can crush the next piece. If he comes off the rower first and has the same thing, I expect to see something very similar to that sprint, but he knows that if he needs a sprint, he can. Don't forget, you can shop Trifecta, the official meal delivery partner of CrossFit at trifectanutrition.com backslash CrossFit. Get 40% off with the code CrossFit. Look at that QR code right there on your screen. And so just getting loose for Papadopoulos. A little jog back, get ready, shake it out. Trying to win all. I don't believe we've had anyone win all three segments today. I don't, I don't think so either. I, I, I tell you what, he blew my doors off. I was not expecting him to win that first segment. You don't put a man that's that large in the gymnastic arena. You're like, where it's like, oh, he's a gymnast. No, no, he's a barbell guy. All right, I cannot wait to see what sort of wattage he pulls on his screen. I mean, he may he may pull three cows in his first pull. <laughs> 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 I 
Underway for the calorie and the run segment. And again, look at that. Man, they are just on it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> 2,500 calories an hour. Look at that. Big, long, heavy duty pulls out of this guy. So he's now able to use his strength. He saved his legs on the snatch. Really didn't have to do any sort of a dip. But now he's using those hips, using those legs, and that big, strong pull to just crush this. What I like about it is you look at it, Bill. We've talked earlier on a sprint. Maybe sometime the technique goes out, the rounded back, too far on the seat. That looks, that looks pretty solid. Even no, on the sprint. It's, yeah, it's a solid sprint for sure. He's still sitting at 2,500. Here's Finn Smith, right around 1,500 cows at 40 strokes a minute. She's already up to 18 calories. Pop wow! Up. 50 seconds, less than 50 seconds to complete the row. He's hopping over the log at 50. Holy cow. And again, looking around to see where everyone is. Little, she's slowing up here a little bit. I'm surprised Cerna's up there that fast. We'll jog down to the finish line and a clean sweep of mixed mode madness for Giannis Papadopoulos out of Greece. <laughs> That's a fit guy right there. That was impressive. That was really impressive. Victoria Finn Smith, the female, top of your screen. She'll have to hop over one log. And she's not going to be able to chase down the leader here. That's either either Pravati or Lepinen. That is going to be Anita Pravati out of Sao Paulo, Brazil. Here comes Victoria Finn Smith. She'll finish second in this segment, not necessarily the event. And you can't take anything for granted. Here is El Debs is in. Carly Matthews comes across. China Cho is in. And we've learned several times, Bill. You, you, you can't take anything for granted you think you know. I mean, other than Giannis Papadopoulos, you think you know. You mean our, our internal head map yeah. hasn't been working correctly? What are you talking about? <laughs> I mean, twi twice today we've, we've thought, oh, they've won two segments. Surely they've won, but they had a bad outlier event. Man, athlete control to the rescue with these athletes. Instantly just giving them water bottles to drink and to pour on themselves. That's awesome. Way to take care of the athletes out there, guys. Everyone's in at the 1031 mark, and that wraps it up. And what a performance by Giannis Papadopoulos. Man, just the entire event today. Incredible showing of athleticism. One for these guys, but look at the way Papadopoulos just handles the barbell. Now, I expected this. I wasn't expecting that on the rings, as we saw earlier. And then the row. Come on. Well, it's basically he's putting on a clinic. And I think he's pulling at least one, if not one and a half. Well, he's definitely pulling one. One and a half to almost two calories per stroke on that. It's, it's moving so well. Lots of power and then just able to coast in as he finishes up. Man, he put on a show. Uh, Giannis Papadopoulos, a clean sweep. And I believe he is on the field with Derek Forrest. Here with the winner of the event, Giannis, you absolutely crushed it. All those movements, you know, you crushed the row there at the end. How was this a reminder that you had to continue to push the pace each segment? I need the points. I stayed bike in the first three workouts. I need to get along. Did you save your energy for this final two stretches? Because you absolutely crushed the snatch and the row. No, I didn't save nothing. Putting it all out there on the field. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, guys, back to you. Thanks a lot, Giannis, uh, or, or Derek, Giannis Papadopoulos. Wait for just, just give us the pose, man. I, th I, think, I think he needs to, like, work out a little bit. He's, <laughs> he's kind of thin. Have you quit lifting? <laughs> kind of light, maybe a little skinny. I mean, I wouldn't want to tell him that to his face because he's, you know, a little light, but geez, he's giant. That man is giant. Let's go ahead and take a look at the final results here in the 35 to 39, starting off on the women's side. Anita Pravati, 315-17. She'll take it, followed by Tucker and El Debs, who we knew would be up there. Had a nice finish in that one. So that's how the women finish here in this event. Carly Matthews, not bad, a fifth after a really nice performance inside the Coliseum earlier today. Switching it over now, as we know, Giannis Papadopoulos. Yep, no surprise, 401. The winner, Brian Wong, who 
on one sprint tripped open the door <laughs> but still those long legs for Papadopoulos I don't know if you're catching him Craig Kenny there's a veteran guy in yep. third followed by Josh Burundi yeah great finishes by all those athletes so that's how it finished. Bill, your, your final thoughts here, not just on this event, but the day. Uh, for the day, just an incredible showing of athleticism for all these athletes. The test itself today was beautiful. The, all the different pieces they had to do, some new implements, uh, some high-intensity work, and, man, what a, fun, what a fun event for all the athletes and for us to watch. You ready to get up for some ball balls tomorrow? Yeah, of course I am. Are you kidding me? All day long. Well, there's some unknown and unknowable as well, but we will be back with you tomorrow. For the entire broadcast crew, Bill Grunner, Tom Miazga, as well as Derek Forrest, and our staff behind the scenes, I'm Jeff Brightwell. Thanks for joining us today for the Adaptive and Age Group Division. We're going to be back with you tomorrow at the 2022 Noble CrossFit Games. A lot of things were going through my head. After birth, I still remember I could not walk downhill with the stroller. Now all of a sudden, podium was realistic. You've also got this development where you're starting to these younger athletes. Kids who have been doing CrossFit since they've been in elementary school. Now O'Brien, we saw her stare right in the face of the reigning women's champion and not blink. The young, upcoming, new blood of the sport. Whether your goal is to chase records, write history, or become the best version of yourself, the intention put into the process is the same. To push your body to give its best every single day. For your body to give you what you want, you have to give it what it needs. Consistency you apply in every detail around your training is key. It allows you to perform one more rep in the last second. 
it's that rep that makes all the difference. To make you better tomorrow. The cool part about Expanding Horizons is there's no other program out there that bridges the gap between youth on probation and life after probation. So it's a court order program uh, where they come to CrossFit four days a week for an hour and participate in CrossFit. And this, the success of that program over the course of the last four years has been phenomenal. We all talk about this, right? CrossFit's developing friendships through thrusters and pull-ups. Truly, that means community, and we surround the youth with community. What these kids need is they need a, a positive community that really rallies around them and supports them to be the, the, the best person that they, they can be. You can make it. Remember the values you have in yourselves. That's the lesson I got for you today.